uh, we'll start. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi, Sanjay, and Morali. My name is Dr. Rizwan Qureshi, and welcome to the GP Career Development and Pathways in Australia. Um, all of you who have uh, basically turned on their video, they are doing a tremendous service to mankind and especially to me because I can associate and integrate and interact much better because I don't see any faces who have not got their video on. So if you got your video on, brilliant. And I don't mind in the background if you've got like anything in the background apart from very intimate uh, scenes. So if you got your video on, I can see you, I can shake at you, I can see you raising your hand. So it's all good. Thank you very much. So we got 78 participants joining in. So first of all, a quick round of introduction. Um, uh, uh, Rashmi, we'll start with you ladies first. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Rashmi Naya. Um, I'm the director and founder of Ray Recruiters, uh, a boutique recruitment solution concentrating on IMGs, uh, placing them through various pathways and finding them the right recruitment solution um, in some of the amazing uh, practices here in Wollongong. Thank you. And thank you all for coming today. Really um, great to have such great audience thank you perfect and at this time we're 83 so count is building up uh, thank you all for joining keep yourself on mute unless and until you have to ask questions you've got an option to unmute yourself and we'll get plenty of time to ask questions it's all very interactive it's all very friendly please don't feel that you are being judged i'm not going to ask any questions it's not a workshop it's just a tool provided to make you understand what the pathways are sanjay Hi, uh, hi everybody. This is um, uh, my name is Sanjay Bhargav. I'm one of the uh, general practitioners working in um, uh, close to Sydney. It's called as King Street Medical, and um, Rashmi has uh, been helping us to employ some of the doctors to work with us. And uh, I think uh, you are going to run um, uh, as a video from Smita, who we got recently from India. So I'm one of the physicians trained in India and I came to Australia about um, 17 or 18 years ago. And that's a one, one of the time when we met together, Rizwan and I were working in the same hospital. So over the last uh, few years, I've worked in different hospitals and in general practice. So uh, in this seminar, I'm happy to contribute and get some of the uh, IMGs who wants to come to, to this part of the world. Let's see. And Sanjay, you look just as young as the day we met. <laughs> thank you, Rizwan. And Dr. Morali, thank you for joining us. Please introduce yourself. Hi, Rizwan. Hi, everyone. I'm Morali. I'm, I'm the, a fellow from, from the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine. I practice emergency medicine in a, a place called Hawkesbury near Sydney. And I also practice emergency medicine, a GP practice. Uh, in um, one in Hawkesbury that's um, uh, uh, also uh, near the hospital and also in another practice in the middle of Sydney and also work for the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine as a medical educator uh, looking after registrars in the college. Perfect. Thank you very much. And you've been very insightful and we have worked together in emergency, did some amazing shifts. So thank you, Murali. All right. So what I'll do in the interest of time, because we've got quite a lot of ground to cover, I'll start off my presentation, which I've collated my thoughts in, and uh, we'll take it from there. So I hope everybody can see the screen that I'm sharing. All right. Perfect. So um, look, uh, uh, what we're going to talk about, I thought we'll organize into um, a very succinct sort of program for your information. So we've done the introduction. So going to touch base on what are the various pathways in which uh, can be followed to become a fully qualified general practitioner here in Australia. Um, then I'm going to sort of change course very rapidly and talk about is specifically the practice experience pathway and touch base on pesky uh, because these are the two main pathways where a lot of GPs are interested in exploring or at least in having a, sort of some sort of awareness. Uh, we'll talk about the job placements, what kind of GP jobs are available for international medical graduates who are wanting to come to Australia and uh, sort of what it feels like to work in the regional and rural towns of Australia. 
Uh, we'll touch base on salary and relocation, but mind you, it is very individual, um, let alone it being private. But we will give you some sort of ballpark idea as to what to expect when you're relocating, because I think this is one of the very important reasons uh, when any IMG would consider migration to another country. So I, I do recognize this being a very individual and very important reason. Uh, now, visa and permanent residency, although it's none of our forte, uh, but we can build up on some of the understandings we've got working with the previous people, colleagues, and everyone. Um, now, uh, just a quick word. You can put your comments in the chat box, uh, but as when I'm talking, I might not be able to respond to that. But please feel free to add on, you know, adding uh, your questions into the chat box. I will come back and we'll have a full on question and answer session. So if you want your questions down or note your questions down after we've gone through the slides, then more than happy to answer each and every one of them. That's the whole idea behind this. So uh, congratulations, we've just hit 100 participants now. <laughs> so it looks good, it looks good. All right, so um, what does it take to become a general practitioner in Australia? Now there are multiple pathways. And in my understanding, and that's based on my interaction with the doctors and general practitioners, uh, because I work predominantly as an emergency medicine consultant, but by and large, majority of IMGs who want to come here, they want to become a general practitioner. Um, and I think there are two predominant reasons, flexible lifestyle, being your own boss, and it's an entrepreneur kind of working experience. You build your own business, you build your own clientele, and somewhere down the line, you build your own practice even. And we've got Sanjay uh, Bhagava who can tell us uh, something uh, about it. Um, historically, there are, or the most common explored pathways are the standard pathway, practice experience pathway, and more recently, the pre-employment structured clinical interview. So standard pathway, I'll just, just touch briefly on. Um, it is for the people who are already in Australia or who want to come in Australia, they have passed AMC1, they have then passed the AMC clinical or completed the workplace-based assessment program. They've completed at least 12 months of hospital placements, so 24 months in majority of the cases. And that means by virtue of all of that, that is AMC1, AMC clinical or workplace-based assessment and their hospital experience here in Australia, they've got a general registration. Now that's the important key or a vital key to join the general practice training program, which is known as AGPT program. Uh, now, General practice program is governed a different way. And I think Dr. Morali and Dr. Sanjay would be able to explain it a bit better when it comes to ACRAM, because general practice is governed in Australia by two different colleges. I know it sounds confusing, but then again, it is addressing the needs of the community, which is both urban, regional, rural, and far rural where you know Morali may have an experience. But just to keep the concept clear, the general practice exams uh, are and training is governed by College General Practitioners or Royal College of General Practitioners, uh, Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine. Uh, and these are the two main bodies which govern the general, uh, general practitioner training and exams. So the standard pathway is sort of similar. I think for the rural and remote medicine, the pathway incorporates more hospital time in one of the key areas of skills like emergency, obstetrics, anesthesia. So those of the doctors who are really interested in that they've got previous background in anesthesia or obstetrics or emergency medicine, they I think would be more suitable for ACRAM pathway towards becoming a general practitioner. The salary tends to be a bit better because they're working far more remote and they've got a very independent skill set. So uh, yeah, we'll touch base on that. Now, practice experience pathway has been around for a long time. Uh, now, the list of the practice experience, which I'll show you in a while, keeps on building up as more and more programs are added. And the reason most of you are interested over here is because recently, this year, in March 2023, MRCGP International, or South Australia, has been added as a partially comparable program, which opens doors of opportunity for the doctors who are working in Middle East, Pakistan, India, and any of the Southeastern, uh, South Asian countries. So we'll talk about that, that what does that pathway specifically involves. Now, as much as I'd like to say that pre-employment structured clinical interview is a pathway, it is not, it is an interview. It is a Zoom interview, which lasts about 60 minutes, and then you get accepted to a practice. Um, so it's just an interview for the people who've got three years of general practice experience. They do an interview specifically for a general practice. They get accepted to work in that general practice after passing the AMC one, that is, 
on a limited registration. Now they can have a provisional registration as well, meaning that they have passed AMC2. So if you passed AMC2, you can work in the clinical um, uh, practice after passing the AMC2 and can, can also get a full registration. And thanks for that document, Rashmi. I think that was very insightful. Yeah. Uh, so anything you like to add at this stage, uh, guys, Rashmi, Sanjay, or uh, Murali, or we good to go further? I think we're good to go further. Um, like Rizwan said, the PEP pathway is of key and rapid increasing of interest at the moment because obviously MRCT International has been added to, which gives it more scope for us to like diverge towards it. Yeah, so yeah. I think we should all look out for information on the PEP pathway right now. Right. Yeah, when I, in regards to your Akram and um, RCGP, I think you highlighted that it's more based on the rural and uh, remote areas. So you do get a different experience. And if you are a specialist in your country and you have got a experience of anesthetic, anesthesia or an experience in obstetrics or in general medicine, you do get um, uh, validation of that. And there is another pathway in the acronym where you can get a specialist uh, recognition also. Isn't it, Murli? Uh, yes. Yeah, I've just put in the pesky pathway for Akram. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost both are similar. The thing RACGP and Akram, but Akram's one is first. There is a written component for it, but it's an easy written component. It's like MCQ, mm -hmm. and then and, uh, and then there is an interview based questionnaire. I've just put in the uh, handbook. On uh, on the chat show uh, chat uh, about um, the Akram uh, spec uh, details. Okay, that's very good. And just to give you a heads up, guys, we just gone live on Facebook as well. Just because I think my Zoom capped out at hundred, and we had about four hundred plus registrations um, for this. Uh, so uh, just to make you aware that we are uh, streaming in live. All right, perfect. Uh, thank you. Um, now, where is my screen? You can all see my screen that I'm sharing? Uh, I think your screen is gone. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can see some of the movement. Okay, all right. Just give me a second. These are the technical glitches, which I was not expecting, but uh, such is life and such is... <laughs> all right, okay. Let me just start it again. Perfect, all right. So can you see the screen now, Sanjay? Yes, I can. And what does it say? Yep, standard pathway. Yep. <laughs> okay, good. Because the, the other day I was sharing my screen and it was at all my private emails open up and people were saying, yes, we can see your screen. And here my all the emails and anything was in it. Um, so just as a quick summary, we've covered about the ways of entry into an Australia through the um, through the GP um, sort of routes. We've talked about the standard route, which is pass, passing the AMC1, AMC2 and getting onto the GP program. We are now going to deep into PEP pathway, which is also known as Spectus Experience Pathway. Now standard pathway is also now known as Fellowship Support Program, which starts after you pass the AMC part one. It's a self-funded pathway, meaning that you have to pay. You don't get paid during this um, you know, training. Uh, which is how it's structured. And I don't know the details of it. They appear to be some Commonwealth funding towards the GPs training in this pathway. I think some part of that funding is gone. But nevertheless, my understanding is that you have to fork out nearly about $40,000 when it comes to exams as well, over two to three years to the completion in installments. It's not a lump sum um, you know, cost, it's in installments. Uh, no salary, and you need to do the exams at the end. That is simple as standard pathway. Now, I have had recently uh, a few uh, doctors who approach me uh, because they had to have an interview for FSP program. Um, I did conduct an interview. They were successful in this interview, and they are sort of happy through this pathway. So just to make you uh, aware that this is a pathway which is taken by some of the doctors, and... Uh, I guess if you're able to invest, like, I mean, an average master's program here in Australia would cost you about twenty-five dollars to $30,000. So it's more like that kind of investment, $35,000. And 
being a GP, you will be able to recuperate that in a few months. So I think if you look at it as an investment into your future, it does make sense. Uh, but then again, it comes in with a huge investment on its own right on installment. And I think installment could be anything between $8,000 to $10,000. I hope it makes sense. Now, the PEP pathway, the popular. Now, uh, it's, a, it's a handful of the list, so I don't want you to worry about it. But I think most of you who are interested in this list are interested in, um, you know, uh, membership of the Royal College General Practitioner, which I've put out on the top of the list. Um, so there are two variables of specialist pathway. Either your diploma, if it's listed in any of these lists, there are eight for partial comparability and nine for substantial comparability. And if your program is listed, if you've done any of these diplomas or degrees, whatever they're called, then you can be partial if your program's in partial list or substantial if you're in substantial list. Now, what's the fundamental difference between the two lists? For me, the fundamental difference is only one. For partial comparable program, you have to do a fellowship exam at the end, which is the fellowship or Royal Australia, Australian College of General Practitioners. For substantial comparable program, no exams. You come in, you do some workplace-based assessment, you're done. You're a fully qualified Australian GP. So if any of your program is from these colleges, you're already on a front foot. Okay, all right, let's go and deep dive a little bit more further. These are the list of non-comparable programs. So you can see that these are the candidates who have submitted their application to uh, Australian College of General Practitioners. They've gone through their application. They were either not satisfied with the curriculum or the training requirements of all of these programs. And they've said, no, you're not comparable you will not get any special treatment for us. Well, what does it mean then? Well, it means if you're not comparable for someone who's in Pakistan, they may have done like, I don't know, they may have done MCPS, which is a very popular GP program. That may also put you uh, in that list. In fact, I would, let me just hold back on that statement. I think if somebody has done membership of College of General Practitioners from Pakistan, I won't say that it's in this list because it's not. I'll talk about that a bit later. So if your program is in this non-comparability list, that means that your curriculum and your training, college is not happy with. Both Akram and Royal Australian College of General Practitioners, they're not gonna happy, they don't want you to give you any sort of leeway. So what it means for you, that you have to either do AMC1, AMC2, 12 months of hospital practice, get a general registration and enter into the you know, general practice training program, or you can enter by the pesky route which is AMC one only, and then interview with the practice and then entering into the general practice pathway, which is, which is quite reasonable actually. And we'll talk about a bit more about pesky pathway down the line. So what about uh, PEP? Um, what is the process involving the PEP? Uh, sorry, before I go down, what if your qualification is not listed? So I was talking about, there are some good programs out there and obviously, um, the statement on the college is that if you have not got your program listed in this list of uh, non-comparable, that means that they have not been enough candidates filing for an application for comparability assessment. So you might be MCPS, but you have never had that reviewed by the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners or FCPS or any other general practice program from your own country. But if it's not on that list of partial, substantial, or non-comparable, that means it has never come to the college knowledge. And I think some of the programs are really good and they need to be looked into. And even though it may mean that, you know, that program is eventually not recognized, at least you've tried it. And there's a process behind that. How do you know if your process, like, I mean, to be honest, I don't want to give you a false hope. For MCPS, I don't think it will lead to any sort of recognition. It'll pretty much be non-comparable for FCPS, which seems to be a better program. And if you've done it from the good center, like good university hospital, good general practice placement, then you know there's probably a chance that it might come into a partial. Like, don't ask me these questions. There's a process to follow, and you can follow this process. I'm not the one who's making the rules. So have your degree assessed, um, an official copy of your specialist general practitioner college whatever that college is, College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan or equivalent in India or Bangladesh or whichever country you've come from, an official letter of your training organization confirming what is their curriculum, the year of their curriculum, a specialist general practitioner qualification that it leads to, 
whatever the name of the exam title is, FCPS, MCPS, MD, or whatever it is, and the year when you got that qualification. And then submit all of that to education support at racgp.org.au. Takes about 10 weeks, and then they'll give you an outcome. All right. Uh, doesn't involve me. Don't ask me this question. Please don't flood my emails with this question that am I MCPS? Can I get, I don't know that. You have to do this pathway yourself. And there's a form behind that. That's the proper form of that. Um, you put in your personal details, your array, you basically provide with all that uh, thing, which I've highlighted in the previous slide, and then you submit it directly to the college. I'm not sure if there's a fee. There might be a fee behind it, uh, but it's worth entertaining if you're interested in doing that. All right. right. Can but, I can you one for yes, a second? Please. Yeah, Sanjay. Please. Yeah, I think what you are suggesting is fantastic, but I think um, it is always, uh, it can't be comparable. It will be some experience will be credited to you. So I think it's worth going through your experience. And I would only recommend one thing that put as many details as possible. And these guys would like to see what were you doing in general practice. It's not just saying that I was looking for patients for two years. Describe the patients, go as much as de in detail. If you have seen obstetrical and gynecological, you need to say how many antenatal cares you were involved in. And if you were involved in uh, some sort of surgical background, so just say that this is my emergency experience in surgical cases and things. So just to get that experience evaluated, but the college, if they are not there in the, in the, in the list, it is very unlikely that you will get through easily and get it comparable. So that's my suggestion. Good. All right. And plus also uh, one more thing is uh, that uh, you need to have a postgraduate qualification. It's not just a general practice experience. Now, lots of people sent me that I'm diploma in cardiology, I'm diploma in this, I'm diploma in gynae and anesthesia. If you're applying to a general practice college, trust me, guys, you need to have a postgraduate qualification in general practice, okay? So it's not just about the experience. It's also about having a postgraduate qualification passed by the exam if you're thinking of applying via that route. Um, I've just had a message for someone and I apologize that um, the Zoom that I have got only allows 100 people. So that's why we've gone on Facebook Live. So people should be able to follow that on um, if there's, uh, um, you know, more people who want to join. But I'm not governing that Facebook Live chat. So you can still put in your questions. I'll go through the question. I'll respond at the end. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll I won't be able to respond to the Facebook leads at this stage, unless until somebody wants to jump on Facebook and sort of moderate that for me. Um, now, <clears throat> PEP specialist application process. Step one, which I call collection. Um, basic things, MBBS, your MRC GP, or whatever your postgraduate qualification is. Confirmation letter, training pathway, which you took to lead to MRC GP degree and description of theoretical and practical and summative examination. That is just basically to highlight what that examination was about, what was the component of examination. There's a theory component, there was an AKT component, there was other components and so forth, okay? So let's let's take it from there. Uh, medical cert uh, certificate registration, of so you should be registered in your own home country. So whatever your registration is, then yeah. I've just reproduced some of the basic medical qualification, Royal GP, um, degree there. All right. So that's a collection. You should have these documents. And then what you do with that, you go and to the verification phase, which is Epic identity um, for the AMC. You make an AMC portfolio and then you get your MBBS and MRC GP international uh, recognized. Or as I said, it's not just MRCP, it's any degree that you want recognized. And uh, click on the option of sending all the reports to AMC. Okay. So that's the um, verification step. Now, this is, I know, quite a busy slide, but these are the rest of the steps, which I've just submitted in all in one go. Um, it's called comparability application. So basically, they are assessing your GP training and exam and comparing it with the Australian GP training and Australian exam. I know it sounds fair. That's why they've come up with two outcomes, partial or fully. Partial meaning that you don't um, you know, you have to do the exams. That is the fellowship exam here in Australia and fully means that you don't have to do the exam. Now, it 
it needs to have, it's a point-based system. Uh, you need about 100 points uh, for various things, especially in terms of your um, uh, documentation that you're providing. Um, and uh, let's start off with that. So you need to, when you're justifying your training, especially, you need to provide the letter of support, what capacity you were working in as a GP, what were your position, were you a main GP, were you an assistant GP, were you, you know, like an RMO in a hospital working as a GP, there could be a number of different roles, but you should be working as a general practitioner. That is your scope of practice. That is what the application is assessing, assessing you. Whether you're working full-time, part-time, and then it should be all dated and signed by your supervisor. Now, um, it is also important that you put in the nature of your duties, and that's where many of the candidates fall in apart, fall apart. And they can't really describe themselves what they were doing. Uh, I often give an example of it's often easy to think or think about tying a shoelace, but when it comes to describing how to tie a shoelace, it becomes a very complicated process. And I think that's what you need to learn when you're going through this application process. You need to learn the art of describing how to tie a shoelace. So exact nature of work, duties, um, what were your patient demographics, how was it all done, all right? And then it is all point-based. You need 100 points mainly, and I'll show you how you can do that, or you can jump onto the website and find about it. Uh, recency requirements, basically 18 months of full-time experience of general practice, experience prior to the date of application. Um, and if you've got any gaps, any gaps, more than three months, they need explanation. And if their gaps are more, then you would even need a medical certificate or proper reasoning behind why the gaps are more than three months. So three months seems to be a cutoff, uh, but I think any gap is looked very seriously. And I know there could be a number of GPs who have got substantial career gaps. That's fine, as long as you're able to explain them. Everybody takes a gap year here in Australia. The medical student goes for sabbatical to Europe or somewhere. It's all fine as long as you're able to justify. Maybe someone has done, you know, a master's program. Maybe someone has, you know, looked after a sick parent or, you know, a child um, migrating, building up a family. That's all substantial. But what I do encourage all the IMGs, whenever you are stuck in those circumstances, please find a way to explain and justify. You can't just sit home and expect that this gap is just gonna evaporate in air. It does not. It, it just does not happen that way. All right. Um, now, uh, CPD hours. Now that's very strict criteria because all GPs are expected to complete the CPD hours of 50 in 12 months. Um, and they need to be specific to the general practice. So you see, if you're doing CPD activities, you need to make sure that it's ticking off the criteria for uh, general practice. Um, analysis reports a patient treated by you. Now this is important, 10 clinical cases. So it's a reflective learning of 10 cases that you saw and uh, what were the presenting symptoms? How did you work them up? How did you analyze and interpret that information and finally come up with a management plan, like a holistic management plan? Um, and that's where lots of your written and communication skills would be tested. Um, and look, the good thing about PEP is I can understand that some of the GPs are not in tune to do that. Um, and that's where we come in because you can add me as a collaborator on your application and I can fill in those details after you have filled in a draft. Like I cannot make a case up for you. So recently there've been inquiries and I don't know how to answer those inquiries. Maybe anybody can help me out with that. Um, can you make 10 clinical cases for me? I cannot. I cannot make 10 clinical cases for you. You're the person who've seen the patients. How can I come up? Can you write CPD hours for me? I cannot. I really cannot. Like there are workshops online from Think GP, from Emergency Focus, my company. You can take those workshops and make a relevant justification for that, but I cannot cheat for you. All right. That's not what I do. I can be a co contributor on your application and I can make your application look very professional address all the mistakes, but I would still need to you to make some effort on your part to come up with the 10 clinical cases that you've seen. Now, those of you who were maybe have done a clinical orientation course with me, we used to actually get some of the participants to come in and discuss a case from their own practice. It's pretty much like that, but just in a bit more detail. All right. Now, BLS is not a big thing uh, because it is to be only done before you give a joining in Australia. So some of the practices and Sanjim 
and morally and i think rashmi might be able to explain but i my understanding is some of the practices have got their in house bls training so this can be organized so is als which is a further requirement uh, you have to find a stat dac uh, a statutory declaration which is a legal document uh, basically saying that all that you've stated is correct because they will check up on these things and they will go to the sources if you're trying to falsify any of the experience of cpd or clinical cases somehow they've got a committee sitting there who's going to you know audit all that and if they find that you've lied it is pretty much going to cut off all the australian pathway it is a criminal offense to lie on a stat deck so guys whatever you do just don't lie okay uh, and stat deck needs to be signed before either a public uh, notary or notarize or or some sort of other people there's a list on rscgp website who can do a statutory declaration um once you've got all of that and you submit your application uh, you will get uh, you know final word as in whether your application is substantial or partial um and uh, i think the rough time estimate which is mentioned on the college website is about 12 weeks or so might be more might be less uh, but uh, my understanding is if you've coming from a substantially comparable background your application can be pretty much ticked off quickly uh, i think the real hold up would be in the apra land uh because as uh, i know sanjay was telling me that they've got some gps who are stuck in the apra land for we were having a meeting yeah. uh, a few days ago in our emergency department we had recruited some of the jmos from india and they're stuck in apra land for about 4 months now because apra is in its own mind and wealth of information they need to make sure the gps that they're recruiting uh or the doctors that recruiting they are um you know legitimate there have been various instances in which uh, people have escaped through the system and they were not even doctors and working do you remember those instances i don't know if you know or remember that <laughs> all right okay um so far so good anything i know it's a bit of a mouthful and handful and i sore and very busy but sanjay or uh, morally do you want to add on something here i'm happy to answer questions it's so much um uh, rizwan if anyone wants to ask questions okay I'm well hold that answer. thought yeah we'll go on and we'll take the questions at the end we've still got a few slides to cover um so let's keep on going so training um training as i said it's all point based you need 100 points and uh, that's how the process looks like they they are going to so people often ask me question how are they going to ensure that i've done the right amount of training well this is this is how they'll ensure there are two types of document to justify your training there's an independently verifiable document which is a letter of support from your practice principal practice manager or practice letter head stating your name position hours worked and that is like pretty much set in gold and when it is provided under the statutory declaration they will trust you for it um, but if you can't provide that because some of the gps who are working as a principal gp they might be a owner gp of their own practice then they need to get some corroborating documents which is letter from the medical director from the local hospital from the other other medical professional who are working in their practice the photo uh, copy or scans of patient records photos of facility referral letters accountings bookkeeper notes so there are ways or even a roster i was quite surprised to see that so there are ways it's not set in stone and there are many gps who have got their own practices especially it's a very important trend they've got good big medical centers and practices in india and pakistan some of them have got like very busy practices so there is a hope for them as well as long it breaks up to those points okay and it's all set out in you know it's all available all this information is available on rcgp website okay um so the other thing which i want to touch base on very quickly is that the there's a criteria where should the practice be or the training be well it should be in a comprehensive australian general practice which means that it it is a full general practice it has got continuity of care health promotion illness prevention just like any other busy medical practice you're doing everything which the patient requires you're providing a holistic care maybe you've got multiple or multiple range of services you're not only providing a service of care as an acute care center but also following them up um so go up on why this is important the the importance for that is if you're not working or if you're working in a very small community clinic somewhere very rural then it will reduce your 
acceptability time and there are um, there are you know regression tools for that it may be 85% of your full time work or down to even 75% if you're working very rudely, if you haven't got a patient workload, if your practice is only limited to provide some sort of urgent care only, then they will look at it, they will search it up, they will call and make inquiries, and they'll say, finally, we're not happy with this practice, and we're going to just accept it for 50%. So that may reduce your experience down to two and a half years or something like that. All right, um, moving on. Uh, recency requirements. So uh, this is, I think, not a big area to explain further 12 months full work, uh, full time work in the last four years prior to the application and four week full time work in 12 months prior to the application that is for pep applications so i think everyone who is in that should be working basically it's saying that um all right okay gaps as i said three to 12 months gap require a detailed explanation in terms of medical certificate travels employment contracts if you're working in some other non-medical practice or whatever it is and CPD requirement we've touched based on, it should be relevant to the general practice and you need to provide a minimum of 50 hours in the 12 months prior to filing for the application. Um, clinical cases we've touched based on, 10 clinical cases, variety of cases, complete assessment, investigation, management, continuity of care, patient-centered care. Uh, I've seen some of the application which the candidates have sent me. Uh, I've now seen uh, three applications they have done an amazing job. And I, I'm really proud of the work they've taken to fill in their PEP application assessment form. I was actually auditing and doing a meeting yesterday. I think that person might be even the meeting today. Beautiful job, wonderful job. So uh, look, those of you who have done a genuine work, it shows in that. And college looks at those things favorably because it shows your grit as a GP. It means that what you're saying on paper and what you're saying personally, it makes sense. Uh, stat deck um, is this document. You fill in the details, you write a list of the verifiable documents that you're adding in, and then you have them witnessed by the notarized public or any of the stat deck people. Um, Okay, finally, um, a standard stream we've talked about initially is also known as a fellowship support program. You are assessed in terms of being eligible, you enter the program, uh, you participate in the program, and then you do the exam and you get awarded. Uh, PEP specialist pathway is you get comparability assessment, you get given either a partial or full comparison, you enter into the program by signing agreement with your supervisor and with that practice, you participate in the program and then leads to the fellowship. And that is it said, if you are fully uh, comparable, no exam. If you're partially comparable, exam. And it's a very quick program. Like for someone who has done like uh, uh, partially comparable, I was looking at, you could be ready within 12 to 18 months to sit the fellowship exam. So it is a very fast track process because it is accounting for your previous experience. Okay, um, and the college has said on their website that if you have got uh, like about, uh, I think if, if you're working part-time here in Australia, you may get about 48 months of time. And if you're working full-time, then it would be 24 months. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, let's give me a second. Perfect, okay. Let's move on quickly. This is the just a comparison between substantially and partially comparable. Apply for registration, provide a number once you've got an application. The college will actually give you an outcome that you are partially comparable, you are substantially comparable. That would be a letter. It's, I think, referred to as letter or form one. Uh, you do need that letter to apply for registration and provider number. Provider number is basically you're saying that I've got a license to practice as GP. You enter into the program and there are two requirements when you're entering the program, obviously finding a job and then getting the GP uh, supervisor to accept your training. You do the exams, which is an AKT, KFP and OSCE, and then, then you get awarded a fellowship um, degree. Um, so this is a PEP Pathways R training program. They're not coming here just ad hoc as a GP, they are training programs. Um, it does not matter if you've done your fellowship or membership exam, you'd still need to complete the exam. If you don't want to do the exam, well, you can be as long as a trainee, but then there will be a cap. Then are there are different routes. I don't want to go into that because that's beyond the scope of this 
talk like what can i do if i don't pass the exam what if i don't want to do the exam whatever it is i i'm we can talk something about that later i am not sure about those routes but i'm sure that you you know all the subcontinent people are very inventive when it comes to you know back door pathways <laughs> to stay in the country so i think you all may have already have some ideas all right uh, cost so yes apparently the sex uh, program that cost the good thing is about uh, is that if you can want to lodge your application it costs only 575 australian dollars to lodge your application and same for both partial and substantially comparable that is just an specialist application uh, the outcome will be either partially and substantially unless and until obviously your degree is already set and laid out as partially or substantially comparable once you get accepted in a program it's 8 grand 8000 but i don't think that it's a lot uh, and i reason i say that because this is roughly equal to your salary so uh, plus um, rashmi might say that the gp surgeries are you know they they want good doctors they want qualified doctors and uh, they will be providing with uh, you know bonuses sign up bonuses they would be providing with the relocation expenses and these relocation expenses could be double that amount um and this is not payable up until you are accepted into the program so this is not an upfront fee it's only at the last step when you're signing up for the program when you find a gp supervisor you find a gp that you would work with you maybe even taken a sign up bonus i don't know <laughs> so this can be looked into it's not something that i would worry about too much um then there's some exam fees and all that all right good good um my top 10 recommendations that's where my talk ends so my top 10 recommendations are that orient yourself don't take my word for it a good doctor is the one who's an aware doctor who does uh, all his own leg work and paper work. and you're doing um, all of that by being here you're taking those first baby steps to understand the process in its you know um, at its core obviously not an entirety but at its core at least um their website uh, they, i know the websites can be very confusing they are very complex but you go and keep on exploring and you'll get the hang of it all right not everything is available on a single website there might be some external links uh, especially about visa especially about apra and especially about registration on other website and it does consume a lot of time but i think you have to start this process if you are serious about it um you need an mrc gp or amc1 to come through any of those pathway i'm talking about pesky pathway and i'm talking about pep pathways um or any of the other programs which are listed as partially or substantially comparable so please um you can ask me as many questions about i've done this diploma i've done this degree i don't know how to answer those question if you don't have those qualification with the college is listed i'm not the college i cannot make them happen for you um i've told you how to have your qualification assessed there's an alternate pathway so do explore that but this is a bare minimum and if you've got none of that probably the best idea is to do that um before you know you ask my services um to come in play for you um okay so that's the other thing you need gp experience uh, and it needs to be accountable it needs to be auditable uh, if the college checks it you need to have it covered um and it needs to be in a comprehensive gp practice which provides holistic care in terms of patient assessment management and follow up and everything it can't be just blown out of the window that i've done worked in this center sometimes people send me their cvs and i google where they were working it does not even look like a hospital so uh, look you're applying for a comparability assessment the college will ensure that it is a genuine comparison Uh, otherwise they will happily keep your 575 dollars and say sorry you're not comparable so just having an mrc gp will not cut it it will just not make it happen for you in fact that is probably the least of your worries having an mrc gp international the majority of the worry is to substantiate that training experience uh, where if you haven't got it you've been sitting home you've been doing you know telemedicine or working in a hospital a few days a week there are ways to justify that experience and that's where i can help you but you should be working you can't be just sitting home gp having done the exams and now hoping that some practice here in australia will just hire you for a sign up bonus of $25000 i don't think it's going to work that way um genuine cpd hours uh 
Yeah, give or take thousand dollars, including the Epic verification and AMC portfolio and the initial application of five seven five. Um, yeah, must be committed to the exams if you're coming through PEP pathway, and uh, you need to really. I think in in the subcontinent, and I speak for myself as well. When I was a medical student, you know, everything was done either by the agents or our parents at that time. Uh, I was different from that point of view because I used to do my own paperwork, and I think those things pay. But I think majority of the female doctors would have their, you know, brothers or fathers running and do the paperwork. Now this is reverse. I don't think your brother and father or husband can come and save you here. You need to get very creative with your written and verbal communication skills because this is a lot of paperwork. If you look at the application form, it's it's humongous. And uh, I can help you with that, but I would still need you to input your findings first because I am there to modify, not to invent. All right. So I can work with your experiences, but I would still need you to start getting creative. Okay. Uh, and I, beside, I won't know where you worked, what patients have you seen, how to do your critical case analysis or GP case analysis. I won't know how to justify your experience. So you need to start putting in those words what duties you had. Uh, make your CV, fill in the application, start the process if you're really serious, because the time is now good. And, doc, uh, and I think Dr. Sanjay and Dr. Morali might explain why they're desperate for doctor, because they are looking for good doctors. And Rashmi will also highlight why there is such a dearth of good doctors. So Australia is open, certainly, but it's open for qualified doctors. They're not going to hire anybody um, or everyone they're still going to go through their stringent because they are themselves are accountable and answerable. Uh, and if someone has got a wrong recruitment, they will be answerable. How did this doctor fall through the cracks and who hired them? So everybody of us who is doing this talk are accountable in some shape or form. But then it's a college where the buck stops because they're the final people who will give you the approval. Um, lastly, do your research. Talk to Rashmi, talk to Sanjay, Morali, multiple recruiters, do your interviews, where do you want to live? Australia is a huge country. You may have relatives here. You may have had uh, friends here, the regional towns. And I think the process is such that if you start now, you may get good positions like Rashmi is talking about Wollongong. I work in Wollongong. It's not far from Sydney. It's a very well-balanced town with good transport, education, kids, hospital, university, port, beaches. Yeah. It's, it's like a mini Sydney, I think, in many ways. So uh, once those jobs get filled, then you'd be going rural. And trust me, rural is um, very rural sometimes. Um, um, get help. I'm ha happy to help, but value your time. I am, uh, because of the range of inquiries I've got from hospital doctors, interviews and everything like that, I am not able to return everybody's email. So in the interest of the time, I can only provide advice, which is booked through my career um, counseling sessions. Uh, and it is a paid session to provide that valuable service. Um, and this is to provide you with the right experience, review your CV, review your application as in your credentials, and then give the better, best advice. So quite specifically, um, how can I help you is once you've completed your application form, I can review your application form. I can modify some of the things which are not according to the standard. I can review your personal statement. I can review your clinical cases. I can review your recency and CPD activity as well, uh, because that's where significant amount of your time would be spent, try to justify that. Uh, and then we'll sit together and do a final proofread. So the way I do it is that I book in a Zoom session with you first, and then we try work with you and book another Zoom session at the completion of documentation before submission. Uh, and then with Rashmi, with Sanjay and all the other people, we can look for jobs uh, for you and find you a good contract. And yeah, uh, that's basically it. So this is uh, this is it. So, I mean, I guess people often ask me how to book your services and how to do that. So it's simple with me. Like I'm a very simple man, emergencyfocus.net, click on your mobile phones. It'll open up a very beautiful website, sometimes often with my very intimidating face. And you can click on to whatever you want, AMC, clinical orientation or GP guidance, just start orienting with website. And you can either purchase this package, which is GP careers and guidance and documentation package. Or if you want just a career guidance, you can just book on one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so I, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, but unfortunately, because of the, like, I mean, it's not humanly possible for me to respond to 100 emails uh, and text messages a day. 
it's just not i cannot do that i cannot provide a valuable service so if you want me to provide you with the right service then i'm a full time working doctor as well <laughs> i've got other appointments and commitment if you want a service this is the service and it's a fee based service um okay very quickly pesky i know uh, rashmi you, you want to talk about but this is uh, so if you have got 3 year or 3 plus years of general practice experience you've passed amc1 or you've passed amc2 as well or have completed a wpa program you can qualify for something called pre structured clinical interview which is an interview which means that you do an interview with a general practice um and then you get offered a job in that practice only now on the website um rcgp website it says before you actually do an interview and get accepted you have to have your training checked with uh, medical board of australia because people often think that this 3 years is a walk in the park it's not the college is going to look at it and they'll give you a green, green signal if it is not or if it is yes and for most doctor it is it is fine but those of you who are just thinking they just going to invent a letter and then get very creative and they'll be walking the park i think just think twice uh, so uh, yeah you could be also from someone with competent health department and i think rashmi you were telling me there are few gps who've come in after doing the plab and working yeah uh, and then you, you just do a 60 to 90 minute interview um i don't know if tom is here but we are doing interview practice sessions for pesky starting october so yeah if you want to book an our sessions with pesky preparation we'll do that for you um you get a job offer um i think this service is called uh, the college charges you 2500 that is the college fee there might be some independent fee from ime or acrim has got different so there are three different fee paying model which i don't know why it's that but anyway that's the way things are in australia um and yes as i said we are providing our pesky preparation course from october on so that is pretty much it from my end and that's yours rashmi uh thank you so much rishwan very comprehensive and very interesting with the pathways especially um the pep pathway which i'm very excited about and um i've been getting some inquiries uh mostly from obviously the middle east and a lot from who have done the mrcgp international which is a great platform because with the comprehensive experience you've done in a comprehensive practice that entails you to actually um come in a much more easier pathway um uh, rather than obviously going through the amc pathway so i guess um where i come into play is that my company ray recruiters um we provide a comprehensive healthcare recruitment um we are a comprehensive healthcare recruitment agency and uh we believe in placing the right candidate for the right practice it's slightly different from other agencies in a way that it is a very boutique owned uh recruitment agency uh we take you through the whole recruitment cycle which is obviously start to finish uh, collaborating with rishwan trying to understand your documents uh understanding which pathway you will have to take and which will be the best pathway for you with the experience that you have and um allowing you to also make australia your home and also taking into account the um taking into account your future passions whether it is paving way to dermatology paving way to chronic uh, management or aesthetics something really big that's coming up in australia right now is aesthetics and through the gp path where you're actually able to do that so someone who really is a lot into the hospital side of things and more into that sort of medicine but obviously takes a more longer time for them to complete and become a specialist you do have avenues to the gp pathway that will allow you to fulfill those um ambitions and dreams so um i do concentrate on gp practices mostly um very randomly i do haven't haven't really gone into hospital pathway but more it's gp practices what i concentrate on So um that's my website over there I have put my email address over there for inquiries um again it's obviously inquiries I would prefer a resume 
your degrees. So we are able to filter through and funnel through and provide you the right um, advice. And uh, moving forward from there, we design a timeline with obviously um, a pretty much standard timeline as to how you can start your journey and where you would really see the end part. So I usually give a timeline of six to 12 months. Obviously you have external factors like APRA, which is a big um, stop show. We try to do our best, but obviously APRA is obviously the top show, obviously for their own reason. We call it APRA world, like what Rizwan said. So I call it the same as well. Um, all right, so for the next slide, if you can move across yeah. this one. That'd be great. All right, so Wollongong. Uh, I'm based in Wollongong. Uh, Wollongong's home for me for the last eight years. I absolutely love it. Like Rizwan said, some mini um, Sydney by itself. Now, why Wollongong? Uh, as all IMGs know, we do follow something called as a distribution priority area. Uh, usually it is MM2 to MM7 is where they prefer IMGs working. However, in the recent times over the last one year, due to the shortage of GPs, we have created Wollongong as an area of need location, which allows IMGs to actually come across and allow them to practice in some of the GP practice in Australia. Obviously, Wollongong Hospital is a hospital. It's also one of the workplace assessment-based hospitals. Aside from that, the GP practices have now been classified under the distribution priority area, which allows many of the IMGs to come to a beautiful town like Wollongong rather than going at, at rather than rural, which is obviously very rural. You're coming from Middle East or coming from a place like Pakistan or like India, you obviously would want to come with a slightly some relevance to a city you obviously don't want to go really in the dark end and feel that I've kind of scaled myself back 10 15 years with terms of location so that way Wollongong's ideal it's ideal for obviously many new GB practices are coming up and I should tell you the state-of-the-art GP practices are well-rounded comprehensive GP practices, one-stop shop for all the needs. Some of the GP practices have their own diagnostics, their own um, pathology, dental, skin cancer. It's, it's flourishing. It is in a big scale that's taking off in Wollongong at the moment. Uh, what do we do? We do help you with uh, migration assistance um, in, in the whole process. We do assist you in trying to ascertain what sort of visa you would be uh, eligible to apply for, or if we are able to like um, bring you in in something that's more closer to a 186, which is a new PR pathway. We do have a migration team that works. You know, I'm no expert. I usually just map it all out and then I hand it over to them, but they're an excellent migration team, which really uh, provides a seamless process. The other great thing about Wollongong is also with regards to properties and schools, universities, we have the best, best schools. We have the, we have Smith's Hill Public School, which is obviously a selective school, which is well recognized with a Wollongong University and all other universities in um, Australia largest international uh, university, which is Wollongong University, right at the heart. And also the good thing about Wollongong is that we're slightly better off. If you want to make Australia a home and want to buy property or rent out property, we're much better off than Sydney. Um, it is a great place when you come in and you straight away want to like settle down. Or if you want to buy a property, which is close to a beach town, you don't want to be stuck in traffic, definitely Wollongong is the place for all IMGs, I would say. All right, the next one. So that five, oh I've added this in aerial shot of Wollongong Harbour yes, for that's sure. beautiful Wollongong, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So and all this I like is Wollongong. about five minutes. Yeah. And it's got a port and, and see, it's got beaches. And I, I like, I mean, I, I, I see my time in Wollongong Hospital as like a bit of a downtime, to be honest. <laughs> Sometime I, because I work yeah. in Liverpool, which is crazy. But Wollongong Hospital, even though it's very busy. So that's the other thing that, you know, you need to be supported. All, all of the GP practices need to be supported by good hospitals. So there's Wollongong Private, there's Wollongong Public. 
which are both pretty much like a large tertiary center hospitals with all the services, ICU, P pediatrics, neurosurgery, yes. um, cardiology, 24 hour cath lab. So it's, it's like, yeah, it's quite good. Very seldom you'd need to send patients to Sydney. Um, uh, most of the patients can be handled very independently. And there are other small hospitals in the catchment area. There's urgent care centers, there's Shell Harbor hospitals, not too far away. Um, and Shell Harbor Hospital is also going through an expansion um, in the next few years, I think. Um, That's this correct. is yeah. some of the other shots from the restaurants and beach. Uh, uh, looks like quite busy now. It's uh, often on the weekends, you like all the Sydney siders from the Western Sydney find it easy to go to Wollongong. So from oh. Campbell Town and Liverpool, they all come to Wollongong and flock the beaches there. Uh, this is the hospital where I work at, and there's a Wollongong private hospital. So a very nice tertiary facility where uh, everything is provided. Um, and that's the Wollongong University, which is uh, one of the leading universities uh, here in the country. Um, you can study medicine, arts, engineering, any course you'd like to do. Lots of foreign uh, students. So obviously that whenever you have university, you've got a young migrant population. And recently I've seen so much migrant population in Wollongong and the surrounding suburb. It's just it's just beautiful to see all that. Um, all right, I'll leave you to talk about the visa options. Yeah. I think she's uh, gone and through some yeah. sort of. I so was, the two, yeah. can you hear me now? Yes, yes, now I can hear you, thanks. She just went a bit bizarre. All right, so, um, if you have a look at two major immigration pathways that I often work with IMGs, I usually need a 482 visa. A for doctors, 482 visa is once we obviously get the offer letter and once upper registration is being given, it's a matter of four weeks that the 482 processes and it's very easy and fast and simple for you to actually come across with the 482 visa. Now, there's some criteria for that. It's obviously two years of full time experience as a doctor, and we will have to give the English um, suitability exam as an evidence for um, APRA. So that is the two requirements for the 482 two visa but very interestingly because of these parts of doctors in Australia immigrations actually come out with a 186 visa I believe it was brought out in this financial year or we can straight away put in if you're a full-time I'm doctor with at least three years experience and a qualified English suitability test you are allowed to as soon as you get your APRA registration, we are able to lodge a 186 visa for you. So um, like I said, these are the two pathways I work with. I wouldn't know much more in detail. My migration team looks after that, but I should tell you they look after it really seamlessly. It's start to finish a smooth process. As soon as all the paperwork's been given to us, we start to work on that. So these are the two pathways of immigration that I work on with. And the other thing is 186 is a permanent residency visa. So you can pretty that, much apply for correct, it yeah. from your own country and come as a permanent president, which immediately gives you rights to, you know, Medicare and your children can go for free to school education and what have yeah. you. 402, I think is a temporary, but it leads to 186 visa. Um, I've done a video on these visas on my YouTube channel. If you go to Emergency Focus YouTube channel, you can find details and requirements about this visa before um, you contact uh, uh, for further clarification. Um, all right, I'll go further. Okay. All right, so I'll get Dr. Sanjay to obviously uh, give what a GP practice actually provides once an IMG comes over. So Dr. Sanjay is uh, one of the principal GPs with the practice that I work closely with. And we've just recently recruited a IMG via the pesky pathway and following other feedbacks and the structure that we provided. So I'll hand it over to Dr. Sanjay to obviously uh, drill down the process and practice he's built across. All right, thanks, Mini. Thank you, Rashmi. And uh, Rizwan was a com very comprehensive talk. I really enjoyed it, you know. So, uh, and you kept it quite simple too to explain things. And um, I think you also said the college has its own mind. So you do whatever, uh, you know, there are issues and, but it's great to be there and you can sort out some of the, you know, people's queries and things. Now, we, as a doctors, we have to deliver. We, there's no shortcuts. You can try your shortcuts, but ultimately when it comes to the practice, uh, you know, you have to answer the questions, you have to 
deliver and, and patient has to get better. Otherwise you are in trouble, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So the being a principal GP, I can say that, uh, you know, I'm here to support. So if somebody comes and joins our practice and our practice is growing, so, uh, and I being a IMG myself, I understand the, some of the issues when you come, come across a new country, you need a socializing, you need a, a you know, we can provide you a very friendly environment to work, uh, get you a social interaction, get you a, you know, your kids needs friends and things. So Wollongong is great area to, to join for, uh, for a, uh, coming from some, um, you know, uh, India or, or any other country from Middle East or uh, Pakistan. So, and regarding the academic support in King Street, we are, um, uh, the few doctors who are ready to take on as a principal or a uh, supervisor and they can give all support. Uh, now going back to your the slide of um, providing pesky training by virtual medical observership. So that's the, as you describe, you know, when you get, um, when you pass your minimum qualification and uh, AMC2 and you want to work and then you can, the pesky is basically interviewing for uh, an hour or so to see whether you have got enough um, value to work in that particular place. So if someone is doing PESI for a remote area, then he probably will have to have more hands-on things where there's no immediate doctor. But in Wollongong, because the hospital is there, it's about probably 20, 20 Ks. Uh, it's about uh, 20 minutes drive to Wollongong Hospital. So uh, the PESI is, uh, questions would be based on that particular scenario and particular that situation. Now, um, providing guidance in completing the training plan and position. Um, so this is all as per the APRA specifications and we'll uh, make sure that we uh, tick all the boxes. Uh, provide assistance in liaison between the APRA and the candidate. So that's where Rashmi and some of the other people can uh, write in emails and long you know, letters to, uh, to satisfy APRA's requirement. And the legal uh, level one supervision is where the doctor has to be there in the practice uh, all the time. So some of the, uh, when you come at a higher level of level three or four, the doctor can be remotely there, or um, you know, uh, he has to be available on phone and mobile to answer your difficult um, scenarios when you get stuck in something. But in level one supervision, when you are very new, uh, and your experience is, um, you know, at least uh, two or three years of two years of in general practice. Then, um, then you can probably uh, first six months is a level one supervision. And then again, our job is to make sure that we provide academic support. So we get you CPD training. We do have a clinical meetings in our uh, medical practice. And as um, uh, Rashmi was saying, that we have a good allied health backup. So if you get into a mental health, uh, you know, patient where somebody is very depressed and you need a psychologist or counselor to work, then we, are, in our practice, there are three psychologists who are working with us. So you can just pick up a phone and give them a call and say that, you know, I need someone urgently or to, to get him to see early. So that's one thing uh, where the podiatrist, exercise physio, our physiotherapist, a dietitian, they are all in one medical center. Um, regarding the uh, further career guidance, yes, uh, we can have a chat and see where you are and what you want to do further uh, in um, whether you are happy to continue with RACGP or work in rural area. So rural area has got its own incentives too, not only in your financial uh, you know, point of view, but also sometimes you feel more powered when you are in a small town. I used to work in a small town called Burua, where I was supposed to go through Akram for six months, but I ended up in a one and a half years because the hospital was at my discretion. I felt where I, you know, otherwise in general practice, I would have referred my COPD exacerbation patient or a heart failure patient. I could go and treat those patients myself. So if you've got an experience and you want to work in, in those areas, that's fantastic. Uh, you can really go through the, um, uh, you know, the acronym pathway. 
Now, moving on to the salary. Yes, uh, it is important. So when you um, are overseas and you are working well, whether, whether it's worth taking a big decision to come to this beautiful part of the world. Uh, and uh, that's another important question. So I think uh, what you say in, the, in that slide is that you start with 50% if you are a level one supervision and that's because the supervisor is spending a lot of time. So he in general practice is slowed down because he has to go back and see what you're writing, what you are doing and discuss a plan so that you, know, you are learning something out of each case. So that's why the start, you start you start a bit slow. I think 125,000 uh, would be a good start, but then subsequently you increase every year, and to get to a 250 plus margin, so which is a which is one percent of the Australian salary. So you, you, when you are getting to point of 150 plus, you're already just in one percent of the top earners. So that way you can understand you have your capacity to enjoy and travel overseas. Um, yeah, okay. that's, that's like, it. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I think that was Rashmi who wanted to highlight a few things. Yeah, so I just want to tell you, it's very ballpark figures. We obviously work according to everybody's qualifications, um, where they are at with level one, you know, level one with pesky, it has a sliding scale, but obviously with the PEP, you're a power pathway it depends if you actually move across a level four or level three it's obviously a different uh mark altogether but obviously if you're substantial substantially compared it comes through then obviously you come through as a what an frac gp uh gp actually earns so it comes on par with that so very ballpark but this these are the figures we have obviously accumulated over the last couple of months that we recorded it'll obviously be different for each case and each scenario but we we obviously disclose that or we we kind of like uh provide that in the contract before we actually move forward so uh, just picking up where Sanjay left, is the other important thing that we are providing is the um, salary and re the relocation and sign-on bonuses. Uh, the practice is really happy in the practice that I work with. We try and work with uh, relocation assistance where we provide about 10 to 20K. Now, this might encompass of different factors. It might be your visa cost. It might be something regarding your, uh, your PR application, or it might encompass different factors. But again, it's very, we obviously let you know what this encompasses of, but that's the general ballpark on how we actually work on. The other thing that we work on is called a sign-on bonus, or often called as the golden handshake that we um, where we say in Australia it's a gesture of obviously coming on board and uh, am I, yeah, I think somebody yeah somebody might have turned on so if anybody has turned on I don't know yeah I was getting a fair bit of echo yeah somebody might have turned on all right is it better now? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's still getting an echo. I think sometimes when somebody's on speaker, we get an echo. So okay. just uh, participants, if you've got your speaker on, please turn it off. Otherwise, it will ruin the experience of everyone. Okay. Carry on, please. Rashmi. All right. So um, sign-on bonus is often called as the golden handshake um, in Australia. And that's something we recognize as gesture of obviously coming on board with us and obviously taking oh. us through. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I need to add on to Sanjay. If you want to add anything more on the relocation and sign on bonus, uh, mm -hmm. that would be great. Yep, perfect. Thank you very much for that, Rashmi. That was very good. And uh, do you want to do yes. something right now? Do you want yeah, to click I just something? Want to click on the so I can we, let's click on what Smita Gupta's testimony was because she's one of our one of the um pesky uh pathway um register who's actually come through. So she mm -hmm. has few words to say and how she went through the whole process with King Street as well. Okay, let's see. We do have yes. another video of King Street which we can play too, yeah. Okay. I don't know if anybody can hear the noise. I'll just play the video first, okay. Yeah, I don't think they can hear it. No, you can't voice. Hear it? no, no voice, voice can be heard. All no right. Voice. No voice can be heard. Okay. How do we do that then? 
Um, uh, we could just share it on the Facebook page, I guess, later on. I think so. Yeah, as a yeah. link. Um, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, there is sometimes a quick link. Let me just have a look. Because you can play this uh, video um, with an audio and... Uh, Right, let's just give me a quick, all right, let me just get my, all right, um, speaker, same as system. Now, let me know if you can hear it, okay? No, you got to play. Not yet. No, I don't no? think so. This one, okay. No voice. No voice, okay. Can I help you? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, if you go to your control panel on Zoom, there are three mm -hmm. dots on the right corner. And if you, press those, if you go to the control panel right yeah. on the top, and there are three dots on the right corner. Yeah, yeah. Press those dots, and there's there's an option of share sound. Share sound, okay. Stop recording reflections, disable, hide video panel, share computer sound. Okay, fine. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much for that. Let's try once again. Hi. Dr. Smita Gupta. Can you I see it? Yep. Yeah, it's working. Yes, 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 we can hear it. I have recently relocated to Australia this year. I would like to thank Rashmi Nair from Way Recruiters, who has been very helpful for, uh, for to find a job for me as a gender practitioner and my husband, who's a dentist. She also was very helpful uh, during the time of the contracts and the visa process. Not only that, once we landed in Australia, she was very helpful uh, uh, in the process of uh, for us to settle in here. And um, I would re highly recommend Rashmi Nair from Ray Recruiters uh, for doctors who are looking for job opportunities in Australia and want to make a move to this country. Thank you, Rashmi. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ray Recruiters. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, now there was another video. Yes, I that's for the sure. King Street. So I just want to show the practices that we are offering a comprehensive. Hi, Dr. Smith, uh, okay. Sorry. I'll just uh, close this and I'll bring yeah. that video up. Okay. So this is the one of the practices that we where Sanjay works as a lead GP and obviously we got Smita uh, right now through the pesky pathway. I've worked amongst a number of practices over the last 20 years and I must say that King Street Dental and Medical is the highlight of my career. What I love is the supportive team environment and focus on complete patient care. The practice really promotes a positive team dynamic and respectful workplace culture. At King Street, we are working amongst the best of the best. I love being part of something that helps our local community. My name is Sanjay Bhargav, just call me Jay. I'm one of the principal GP in King Street Dental and Medical. The consulting rooms are huge, as you see, and that's what patients love about it. I have all the latest equipment and the state-of-art facility here. I've got an excellent team with me, including the reception, the nursing staff, and the allied health. Yeah, it gives me a holistic approach where I can just not give my medical side of the things, but getting the allied health, including podiatrist, physiotherapy, under the one roof. We've got a, a cafe at our uh, in our campus, um, and uh, that patients who are waiting, they can enjoy the coffee in between. Hi, my name is Bianca. Um, I'm one of the general dentists working as part of King Street Dental. I'm originally from Canada, but have moved to Australia to pursue my dream of becoming a dentist. King Street Dental is a practice with an outstanding team of dedicated, hardworking staff. Day-to-day -day workflow runs seamlessly, um, and there's a high level of organization. So all of this culminates in a very efficient, um, enjoyable, and relaxed work environment, which ultimately means that our patients are very well looked after. It's especially rewarding to see children who were once timid in the chair um, become not only comfortable coming to the dentist but actually look forward to their next visit. So whether it's a clean or something more involved like a filling, um, I love explaining and demonstrating all the tools that I use, um, talking them through every step and getting them excited about a prize um, after their visit. Working at King Street Dental allows me to put my training to use as the practice is outfitted with the latest technology and imaging, um, scanning and digital workflow. Um, for example, we can make a crown for a patient in a single day. I wanted to work at King Street Dental because um, once you enter the facility, it doesn't feel like a 
dental practice per se. It's a family friendly environment. From the moment you walk in, you smell the coffee, you've got beautiful landscape photographs on the walls, calming music, you've got TVs on, in each of the rooms as well so you can enjoy your favourite TV shows while you're having your treatment done. So overall I think the combination of everything provides a really good relaxing and comfortable environment for our patients so I think that's what drew me to King Street Dental. One of the main things I really like about working here is uh, I feel that you know we're all very approachable, we all share the same goal about uh, you know keeping up the quality of care, good patient outcomes. And another thing I really like is that we've got a lot of facilities on the one roof here. We've got pathology, lots of allied health, so physio, EP, uh, we've got a dietitian here. And we also have uh, dental and we're planning to have more down the track. And I do like that you know we were able to do a lot of things in-house, which actually makes things easier for the patients as well as us help managing all aspects of the patient's care. It's a brilliant setup. A lot of time, money, thought has been put into developing this. We are young, we are new, keen to learn, um, and that's what makes it King Street very special. Yeah, I've been really pleased since moving to um, King Street Medical and Dental. Um, it's an excellent practice. There's a lot of energy. Um, it's a very forward-thinking and 21st century practice. I couldn't have asked more for my first uh, job in Australia. Um, at King Street is King Street Dental is the best place uh, I could have thought of uh, when I was looking at job options in Australia. It was very easy for me to just get into their system and start treating patients from day one. Well, I've found that this is a workplace that's more like working amongst family. They've been looking after both myself and my needs. As a mother with small children who works in the health sector, I have found that this place provides me with both flexibility and the ability to set my own hours, set my own times and dates. And um, it's, it's been an absolute delight working amongst this team. Are you ready to excel your career and join a leading healthcare practice in the Illawarra? If so, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much, guys. That was brilliant. No worries. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, thanks so much for everybody joining us today. Like, it's been amazing to see you all. But yeah, contact us. If you have any inquiries, more than happy to help. Yeah, um, I think we'll probably take, take, take some questions, questions uh, if that's okay. Okay, sure. okay. So anybody has got any questions? Can ask them. Now. Hi. Uh, I'm working as a GP for the past eight years, actually, and I'm uh, currently working for the past four years in UAE. So uh, can I choose this pesky pathway? Have you done MC1? Yeah, MC1 and English also. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so it should be fine. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. I didn't know this. Okay. And Tom, I think, uh, would like to add. Tom, hi. I didn't realize that you were in the background we're sitting very quietly. Tom and I are partnering. We have just uh, recently launched our Sydney Clinical Observership Program. So those of you who are a bit apprehensive of starting to work here in Australia, uh, we can even place you in some of the Sydney practices to provide you with a clinical observership to see how the patients are managed here. It's a very comprehensive program. It's four weeks. So yeah, so we're starting a first round of uh, uh, Sydney Clinical Observership in in August uh, 27th. So Tom, uh, we're going to start our pesky course. So it looks like Dr. Harris here has passed his AMC one, wants to come here in general practice. Uh, I think these were the, will be the kind of people that we are trying to uh, sort of address. Um, and we'll have an online course up and running in October. Is, is that right? What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the aim. And um, thank you, Rizwan, uh, Rashmi, Dr. Sanjay, um, you know, for your amazing talks uh yeah i've just been listening and really impressed with everyone's um presentation so hi everyone um me and myself and dr brisman we're really excited to roll out this observership program and it's really uh one of a kind and possibly the first in australia to have a structured course you know we all know that you can get a observership with your friend who's a gp but through our course it's going to be accredited. You know, you get CPD points, you work with a standard of GPs that you can trust and you get to see what it's like to be a 
general practitioner in Australia, which I think is just such a important ingredient that you need to, that is missing when you move from wherever you are to Australia. And through that experience, we hope to extend that with pesky training as well. So you really have this flawless transition from experiencing what it's like to practice and setting exams. And then, you know, Rashmi, Dr. Sanjay, getting you the jobs and just making it as, as, um, smooth as possible for you guys yeah oh, that's okay so that's that's brilliant and uh, somebody just chat up uh, like i mean there was a question coming up on chat like uh, uh, is it like an online experience no 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 it's it's in person gp experience so you go and get placed to work and observe the working practices of a gp in person we have got an online module so you will have weekly meetings with myself and tom in which we go through the reflective case learning process um you also get some online modules that you can do in your own time as a part of this program and then at the day final day we do a you know uh, full career guidance sort of session day and certificate distribution ceremony so it's both in person which is four week process and then um, online module so it's a combination of both and then if you are interested in pesky then we can enroll you in our pesky course so that is something which if you're interested then again www.emergencyfocus.net is the site now somebody's asking um question i'll just go through some of the questions in the chat box like there are about 65 questions there i won't be able to address all those questions um but it looks like i have got my mrcp gp exam passed based on my experience as a gp in uae not after any training program is a structured training program required for pep mrc gp so it's not about as much a structured training program it's about if you've done a work as a gp and that can be comparable to the work which is expected of an australian gp so you may have worked in a gp practice uh, which is a comprehensive practice and if i can have a look at that and you can have a look at that compared to the standards which are laid out on FRAC GP, um, you know, website, then you will know that, look, you, you probably qualify for this pathway. Uh, could you please discuss a little bit about GP job with level one supervision? Sanjay has already covered that, uh, that they do provide level one supervision as a part of pesky pathway. Is that right, Dr. Sanjay? Yeah, I think the, the, I can just say that, you know, each patient when camp comes in, you take a history and bit of exam, and uh, the job of a supervisor would be to go back and see what you're taking history. Are you missing a social history? Are you missing any important point of the history? In, in general practice, the time is the limitation. So we book you for half an hour sessions. So each patient, even if it's a small, you just take a spend some time in history exam and then suggest what investigations and go through a bit of planning. What do you think as a short-term plan, as a long-term plan? Do you think we need to get other allied help? Do you need to send this patient for a specialist? So all those things as a supervisor at level one, we keep a close eye. And the moment you get to a point where um, you can just come and, uh, you know, uh, and the supervisor may come at some later stage for two minutes to see whether uh, once you get an experience, things will, will you know, fast, fast up, fast enough. Okay. All right. Now, that's good. Somebody's asking, can, uh, is hospital experience from Pakistan accepted for pest specialist stream comparability assessment? Um, I would strongly recommend to please orient yourself with the website. Every process starts with your own learning first. And this is a kind of question where you need to understand that this is not right. Uh, no hospital experience is counted as a GP experience. So you need to orient yourself first. What, what are the essential requirements towards the PEP pathway? Okay, there are certain programs um, which are listed as substantially and fully comparable and no, the hospital experience does not count. It's only the general practice experience. Uh, what are the programs, requirements for your observation program? Well, if you've done AMC1, if you're COVID uh, vaccinated um, and you're here in Australia, more than happy to have you on. Um, GP salaries percentage based on all over the country. I'm not sure what it means, but I think they're asking about the GP salary. As we've said, it's sort of ballpark figure of 250 to 350. Um, and then it's based on tax afterwards. Please let me know what do we need to do to fellowship support pathway after a level two supervision? Well, in that case, uh, there's, there's a fellowship support pathway section on the GP website. If you go and look at that, that will pretty much tell you what you need to do 
basically you need to submit your documents about your previous experience once you get accepted then you can get accepted into the fellowship support program there will be an interview pretty much like a pesky interview but much, much shorter version and we can help you prepare for that interview once you get an offer from a gp practice for an interview or shortlisting is it possible to obtain a partially compatible outcome despite substantially comparable qualification for example from home uh, well, anything is possible. I'm not a college, but if your uh, postgraduate qualification is from Hong Kong, which is fully comparable, but you end up being partially comparable, that means that your application form either is not filled in correctly and you've overseen some of the things, or uh, your experience is not worthy enough to be counted as fully comparable. Or worst even, you may sound like even you've got the right deg degrees, but you might still come up as not comparable. So that's the point that I highlighted before, that you can have all the degrees and diplomas in the world, but if you are not got an experience, it's pretty much out of the window. So just make sure that you orient yourself with these pathways very closely, pay attention to what the experience is like. And I've done the video on that already on my Emergency Focus YouTube channel. You can have a look at that. And it's very, I've tried to be as much clear, but there's so much I can fit in in 10 minutes. Uh, but if you watch that video and then look at the some of the guidelines, then you'll probably get an idea. MRC GP experience based. I have in 10 years work in UAE and in Pakistan, GP and emergency training, no training. What chances are there? Good chances. Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be training. Obviously people paid even in Australia, train part-time, train ad hoc, as long it accounts to the requirement of 12 months of full-time training experience. And um, which I've said in my uh, thing, uh, in my presentation and uh, at least four weeks in the last 12 months. Um, Okay, please explain if I can complete, if I've completed GMC registration, can I work in a non-training position? So look, one thing about GMC registration is if you've come through a UK comprehensive, sorry, what is called, uh, it's called a, a competent authority pathway. In order to gain a job in Australia through competent authority pathway, let me just make one point here. Must do 12 months UK work first must do PLAB, then talk about competent authority. No MRC, GP, GP, or MRCP, MRCS, MRCM doesn't count. Not at this stage, okay? You must have worked in the UK for 12 months, then must have passed a PLAB, okay? So these are the two vital things which I, if I look at my emails and text that I just respond on this, I've got a GMC registration via membership exam. Am I eligible to work in Australia? At this stage, no. But if you've completed your you know, 12 months work in UK, plus you've completed your PLAP, yes. You can come in through competent authority pathway means no AMC exam. Same goes with MRCGP. If you've done MRCGP, if you've got the right amount of work experience, I won't use the word training, okay. Training means, but if you've got the right amount of work experience, no AMC. That's the beauty of this program because you're coming as a part of a training exam. Your training is not finished. They're going to get you onto a training program. That's the crucial step. Um, so any of the equal or less than three years you think in the bank in the country and all eligible for passive pathway? I don't understand this question, sorry. Um, uh, GPs done from RCP UK website, would they count a CBD? Yes. My wife is coming after MBBS in Nepal, where it's easier to find jobs as a medical. Can she do any medical jobs before AMC one? Can she do any medical jobs before AMC one? I don't know how mm -hmm. to answer this question. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think that even <laughs> counts as any of the pathways. I mean, if she has done MRC GP or any of the comparability thing, yes, she can. She does, doesn't have to write AMC. But if she's not, then obviously you need to do AMC one. After Pesky and working in the clinic, we have to give fellowship exam, right? Right, definitely. Okay. If there's a long clinical gap, AMC one done, can we get an experience in general practice or should it be in a hospital? Uh, well, it could be anything. You can have an experience in general practice. You can have an experience in the hospital either. But I mean, it's about justifying the clinical gap. Uh, names of the rural areas will be eligible to work. Well, Google it. Names of the rural areas will be eligible to work. Google it. Please let me know where do we need to enter FSP after level two supervision? Yes, you can enter into FSP program after level two supervision. Um, uh, Syrian medical student or pass AMC immediately after graduation. However, don't know how to contact with the hospital to get position. Can you recommend a website? Yes, it's called google.com. You Google it, 
you type, I need to work in Australia at work, open up the hospital or state website to find a job. Second question, what is the most proper visa to get traveling to Australia is skill immigration visa. Depends on what your qualifications are. Uh, if you get a doctor job, then hospital will sponsor a visa for you. Normally it's 482 visa. Have a look at the video that I've done on emergency focus, uh, emergency focus YouTube channel and you'll get an idea of what the visas are. Uh, thank you for a wonderful session. My duty is about to start and I'm leaving. Thank you very much for attending. <laughs> Kindly guide how to get CPD hours if you're in Pakistan as we don't have uh, many CME here. Look, I mean, it's easy. Think GP is free. Emergency focus is other paid platform. Up to date is platform. Uh, you can, it's about justifying the C, CPD activity. So you can get, uh, you know, you can do an activity, you can do an online learning and define your own before, say for instance, I'll give you an example. If you're doing if you want to learn about asthma, you do an article reading on asthma. You define your learning objectives, and then you demonstrate how you achieve the learning objectives by reading that article and by watching the video. If you do that and justify the time, you can do any CPD activity. And there are a number of range of number of websites doing that. Yes, GP can work part time as well. Sorry, Sorry Rizal, can I put in for a second? Please. Because I think people are, seem to be concerned about working in rural areas and they have concerns with. DPA, MM2, and 7. Yep. So with your FSP pathway, it has to be in a what's called a distribution priority area. So that means an area where the Australian government thinks that there's a shortage of GPs. Yep. And MM1 to 7, it means how rural you are. So 7 is, you know, like in the desert. Uh, yep. 1 is in the city. So with the FS FSP pathway, it's generally MM2 to 7. But like Rashmi said, uh, some areas now, even though it's possibly MM1, it has yeah. been considered a DPA area. So you can possibly squeeze into a metro practice, but I can, I'm sure those locations are very popular. And I just want to note that as well, that just because you're going MM2 or three or four, you it's not necessarily going to be a very scary and you know, your life's going to be horrible. It might be a lovely town of 20,000 people and you're two hours drive away from Sydney. So it's still, it may not be as horrible as you think. Um, yeah. That's all I wanted to add. Can I add on that? Yeah, you're absolutely yep. right. So if you in Wollongong, which is a beautiful town, but if you drive another half an hour, you reach Kayama, which is MM2 which is again beautiful. So from Sydney to one and a half is Wollongong, one hour, and maybe one hour, 30 minutes, you are in Kayama. Yeah. So, you know, so you are right in MM2, MM3 areas are beautiful too. So it's not too bad. No, too Great. bad. Excellent. Plus the other thing is that, look, you guys, you have to be aware of the moratorium restrictions, uh, which is that 10 years as an overseas doctor, you have to come and work in the rural areas or regional areas. And that restriction starts to apply as soon as you start to work. So if you're working in a rural, regional, Wollongong, Kayama, or even further down, you're clicking off that 10-year period before you're allowed to come and work in a major city or major city center. So yeah. you, you, you're, you're in having double benefit. You might come into work in a lovely town, a small town with a close-knit community, schools, universities, and whatever it is. Um, plus you're ticking off that 10-year period, um, and then you can come work on a major city. Despite having said that, look, you know, major cities have got their own advantages and disadvantages, but right now, Sydney is pretty much unaffordable for any, any person. Not so much for doctors, I'd say, who are earning 250 grand to 350 grand a year. But again, it's not just about a salary. It's about, you know, your children, universities, parking, housing, rents, and all that. It just put a pressure even on well-earning individuals. Um, I think what we'll do is if anybody has got a question, we've got about 70, 70 people here. And uh, it's okay, getting very. Yep. Yes, please go yeah, for the next question. Yes, so I'll take your questions. Yes. Uh, let's take an audio questions now. All right. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First of all, thank you for all of you for such an informative session. So I have a uh, one question regarding your clinical observership program. So in that four week program, do a person do the observer? Has our direct, a direct uh, contact with the patient, or just we need to only observe? So, Tom, what do you yes, think? Yes, yes. Um, so, you will essentially be acting as a medical student because, you know, as, as you know, there's uh, uh, legal implications as well. If you are to be interacting as a medical practitioner, then that can be very tricky. 
So as a medical student, you will ask consent whether you can observe procedures, but involved in, it uh, depends on the GP that's um, your supervisor as well. Um, but I guess one of the benefit of the program as well is you, you, you'll get excellent references if your performance was satisfactory and that really helps with all of your applications. Because regarding the other terms, we will do that program. So probably the GP to whom we are doing that observership, he can be our referee as well. That's right. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. So because uh, I did some observership in, in here in Canberra in some GP clinic, mm -hmm. and then they asked the referee for some questions regarding like our observership because they asked, uh, have you assessed his like a history taking or examination sort of question. So if we, if we, we won't uh, do that in that observership, how can uh, GP uh, fill that form on our, uh, on our I can answer that yeah. question. So basically yeah. it's all about how you interact with that particular GP tutor or a trainer in that practice. And with lots of things, it's built up on your personal and professional relationship with the GP. As the GP get more comfortable and they get more easy with you and depending on your interaction, they will be completely able to comment on your communication skills, your patient interaction, taking some history. And sometimes I've seen GPs actually allowing to take the initial history. And if it's not happening, you can ask the GP, would you mind if I ask a few questions? Okay, it's, it's no harm. Worst case scenario, he may say, no, I don't mind, or yes, I do mind, but at least you've shown your enthusiasm. It is based on your enthusiasm. Now, what me and Tom have done, we built another layer to it because we will be providing you references as well. So we are doing what we called an online module. So at every weekend, we'll be discussing with you the cases that you've seen in the practice during that week, and what did you learn from it? What questions did you ask? What investigation, referral, management, what did you do? So that adds a layer of complexity or a learning from that point of view. So I think that's, it's something which you cannot generalize for every person. If you're switched on, if you're more um, inquisitive, if you're more enthusiastic, then certainly, you know, you'll get a very good reference. And I only believe in going, doing excellent references. You know, Uzma, I always say that I do excellent references. I don't do average references. But in order to earn that excellent references, you have to show me an excellent performance. So when you interact, you come and do all my workshops and you keep your camera on, you interact with me, your enthusiasm will get you to the next level. And yes, references do help. Okay, okay. yeah, thank you, Dr. And one more question for that uh, four week observership, do we need to arrange our own like a uh, accommodation or? If you're coming from, we've got actually participants coming in from Brazil, South America, we've coming from India. Uh, oh. We've got uh, participants coming from South Australia. I think there's one coming from South Australia. So at this stage, because it's our first program, we're trying to let it be. But I think me and Tom are going to have a discussion from next one onward. We may have to work on some sort of holistic approach to that, maybe increase and in our work with working partners and come up with some sort of recommended list of accommodation. Although, you know, we're not accommodation. And if this something happens, it will be an extra liability for us. But at this stage, I think it's your own sort of arrangement because people are coming from everywhere. I don't know what their requirement is. Are they coming with the families? This person coming from India who she said that she's coming by herself. Now she's telling me that she's coming from her parents as well. So then it becomes a very difficult for someone like me to organize for an accommodation, which I cannot really do that. I don't know her budget. I don't know what her preferences, where does she want to live? So yeah, I think it is your process at this stage. Not to but outsource to someone who is ready to do that is one. What is that, sorry? You have to outsource this job for someone else who has time and can do that for you. Yes. no. So that is in working process because we've got now uh, a waiting list, which is full out for the next program as well. So I think we have to look into it and Tom and I are on it. Wonderful. So okay. any more Thank questions, you, guys? Thank you, Dr. Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bukhari. Yeah, any I'll more questions? Tomorrow. Yes, Saraf, please. Thank you uh, so much for the uh, amazing talk. Just wanted to check something with, I don't know, recruiter or the employer, someone could help me out. So my wife is a hospital doctor looking for a job in Sydney. Uh, I'm a GP in the UK. My, my wife works in the UK as well. 
So if she gets a job as a hospital doctor in Sydney, is there any way I can get an exemption uh, from a moratorium as a, you know, a 10 year moratorium and work in Sydney? Or do I still need to do a DBA thing? All right. Okay. So let me start off with my first layering of answer. So I think it's going to be tricky, uh, Dr. Saurav. If you're working in Sydney and your wife gets an ex if you're working in Sydney full time as a doctor, and you've got a family which is going to schools, if you've got ties which establish within the community, then certainly you can apply for what we called a 19 AB exemption. You can apply for that. The outcome is pretty much, you know, case by case basis. But as a rule of thumb, I've seen a very little success in that. All right. So I think they will ensure that you do relocate to the town which is more feasible based on the experience of the dog, because you're an IMG basically, or your wife is an IMG. Um, what was the other question about AMC? That Does she have to do an AMC? Uh, no, no, there's no question about AMC, oh, okay. just the exemption. Yeah, yeah, so I think it's a bit tricky. Uh, the only exemption I've seen, true exemptions, if you've got a family member, like a children or family member who needs to be in a center of the city because of pressing health needs, like they've got speech issues, developmental issues, um, you are engaged with, uh, you know, physiotherapy or speech therapy. You can't really relocate because these services have been established after a lot of hard work. Um, so then you can apply for an exemption, and that will be granted. That's that's for a fact. Anything else, uh, Rashmi? Yes. Yeah, just, just to add on to that. Yeah, that's I totally agree with Rizwan. The 19 AB exemption is a tough cookie. But saying that, when you come to a place like. If you if your wife applies to Willingham Hospital and you get a job in Willing, that will be the best scenario that will work for you because she gets to work in the hospital and then you'll be able to get a GP job in the area that would actually bypass your, you know, monitorium and satisfies the DPA satisfaction. Yeah. Yep, that's that's and one of the ways. Trying to, trying to be cheeky and trying to get bypass the monitorium earlier, but no, thank you so much for your answer. All right, Dr. Shazia, please. Yes. Um, thank you, Dr. Zan. Uh, my quick question is, uh, you have told that after MRCGP, uh, we need a three years experience. So is this experience should be post MRCGP international or it could be uh, before that? Because I have 15 years of experience, but I have done MRCGP international in year 2022. Okay. So, so uh, should I apply or should I wait for like, so, uh, Dr. Shazia, sorry for the confusion. You don't have to have a three-year experience. As per the college guidelines, you have to have, I think, 18 months of experience. And in yeah. the last 12 okay. months, you have to have a four-week of full-time experience. So, I think experience point of view, we're working full-time okay. in the last one year, you should be good as gold. So, please uh, okay. have a look okay. at the document. Um, I think this document is quite comprehensive and quite much in detail. But for doctor who's been working full-time in the last 12 months, you got no other additional requirement. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you, so, Dr. Thank yeah, you. Should be I will, fine. I will so get you should... registered with your program. Yeah. 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 Not a problem. Thank we'll you. be happy to support. And if you're registering and you're starting your application, please add me as a co contributor. I'll yeah. take you through that process because then it becomes easy when you're doing the application with the RSCG. Sure. So basically, the best thing about the RSCGP program is that you can get me or nominate me to work together with you for your application. So as you're okay. filling your application on the RSCGP portal, I can co-contribute and RSCGP allows that. You might be busy okay. and I can fill in, modify the yeah. words as we go along. So we can work together on that application. And I've got a team who can work on that as well. Okay. All right, any other okay. questions guys? I, I will... All right, okay, Dr. ASR. Hi, hi, oh, yeah. can I, so I'm a 50 year old. And uh, I've been working in a very different specialty. Briefly, I was in New Zealand as a fellow. Mm -hmm. So at some point, I realized that I need to transition into something less intense. And I was looking at transitioning into GP, uh, maybe in my you know, uh, 50s. So is it still an option for me or is it not? The briefly working in New Zealand was in 2011 and 12. And that was like... Uh, uh, a temporary uh, visa thing, a uh, temporary registration, limited registration that they've given to work as a fellow. So I'm just wondering if it's still an option for me uh, 
uh, my age being a challenge so, okay i'll yeah. i'll ask some of it and then i'll get anybody else who wants to first of all you've done very well if you're 50 and you look like that so very good look <laughs> <Yeah>. thank you <laughs> so so the other thing is that age is not a restriction of being a doctor here in australia so if you want to join a gp program with the pathways that we've talked about why the amc route by amc1 and pesky or if you've done one of the qualifications like mrc gp international certainly you can come in and there are some restriction with certain visas on age but with doctor's visa as far as my limited information is age issue can be always looked into because australia right now is trying to get doctors with experience so your age is not a factor at all for training for visa and right. even for permanent residency so no sir and anybody else would Thank like to jump that. in and pitch yeah. in please put in a point i agree with you age is not a problem and the training getting into training program with your experience you probably would get benefit of it so if you have gray hairs you are not you are not getting any negative points so the only issue is with the visa i'm not aware because there used to be a cut off for age of 49 or 50 um, right. you know so if uh, if you think the doctors probably would be still able yeah. to bypass that i'll, I'll, I'll explain that so basically there's certain points you do get points reduced but overall as a credential of a doctor you're still able to match the points so if you want to make your application stronger for an independent skill migration the age of less than 45 matters but if you're over 45 you won't get that specific point but this certainly so many other things that you get a specific point rashmi right. do you know about yeah. that yeah yeah i agree because i had a recent query from somebody who's actually become 60 and who wants to actually come over and i had this question with the migrant i agree with rishwan it's not an age and especially if you're coming over with whatever in a medical field your salary should suffice it yeah Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Tom, for coming in, and I'll Thank let you, you go, Tom. Thank right. you. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Uh, or we are done? I think just unmute yourself and ask a question if you have. Doctor. Uh, hello, Doctor oh. Rizwan. Hello. Hi. Hello, Doctor yeah, Rizwan. My name is Doctor Barda. Yeah, yep. Yep. Please. Hello. Uh, I can't yeah, see you I, because you've got your. Yeah. I just have to ask that. Yep. Yeah. Go for it, Doctor Barda. yeah actually i'm the hospital i just like to ask that i have worked in uh, many departments like gynae uh, as gp also in emergency department and currently i'm working in oncology and palliative medicine both uh, mm -hmm. covering their inpatients uh, emergency departments all the oncology emergencies and palliative uh, family meetings am i eligible for this and i did my mrc gp international Can, uh, should i apply or we need the recent gp experience again So look first of all Dr Vardha you have to look into what defines a GP experience it's a community care of the patients along with a continuity continuity of care so if you are some of the hospitals actually do provide GP clinics so if you think that your experience encompasses some of that um like you run clinics as a part of emergency in fast track area that can certainly be incorporated into it um or at least i think it's still worthy of application it's only 575 dollars the application process and if you're working in a hospital looking after emergencies you're working in ambulatory care you're pretty much doing the things which general gp would expect to do so it's worthy to apply that and uh, it may mm -hmm. no fall through the correct pathway because they are pretty well set out what the gp is gp practice should be comprehensive practice and this should have this and that so it may fall through that kind of criteria but it's yeah. it's worth looking into it okay. any other okay. questions thank you mm -hmm. any other questions guys i've got dr hafsa or dr fahad or dr varda yeah. okay please go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question jump in mm -hmm. so nobody's uh, asked uh, hi hi yeah. can you hear me i can hear you Hello? yes Yes. Hi, I'm Josephine oh, from Hong Kong. I have a mm -hmm. question about the pesky um like the 3 year 3 year experience pathway. Uh, so with that are we working under limited uh, registration? Uh, or, uh, and uh, and uh, does that lead to a specialist uh, like qualification or you're not really eligible? 
sorry, I'll get you, Josephine, to repeat uh, that question because there was quite a bit of disturbance. Can you repeat uh, the question? Sorry, please? yeah. So um, I'm wondering if the pesky interview pathway leads to a specialist qualification, i.e. does it make it eligible to sit the exams or it doesn't? Yeah. So uh, it's only come to my knowledge now recently that, uh, and don't yeah. quote me for that, it's a work in progress, that mm. you join the pesky program after doing mm. AMC1, and if you've yep. got AMC2 as well, then apparently you yeah. can now get a level one supervision, level two supervision, and finally the okay. other levels of supervision and come out as having a general registration through GP pathway. And Rashmi shared a document with okay. me, shared in a particular group as oh. well, that you can get into, get a full registration through a GP practice as well. So if you're working in a okay. GP practice after a pesky and you've already passed yep. AMC2 exam, then you can yeah. join the training scheme leading to FRACGP, yes. So that would that be joining the AGPT? That or... would be joining the AGPT oh, okay. program, yes. That's I good. see, but you will need um PR for that, right? Uh, you permanent, need a residency permanent residency? Or... Uh, okay. I, I am not too sure about that because now it's getting very super specialized. Mm. Most of the AGPT program do require permanent residency. So I would assume that would be, a, yeah. that would be, a, but okay. it shouldn't be an issue because once you get your general registration, the permanent residency is almost okay. like an automatic, it's you apply easy. for a skilled migration based on I a permanent see. residency, um, you yeah. apply for mm -hmm. general migration, you get a permanent residency mm -hmm. within six to eight months and you can join any program. Okay. Okay. And you would be paid the non-specialist sort of salary before, while working yeah. Uh, in your first clinic. Yes. Yes. I see. Okay. And, but if you have a specialist, either with a substantial comparable or the partially comparable, you would be paid the specialist salary. That's right. That's right. And on the FSP, you won't be paid at all. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Confusing, okay, right? Got it. And, um, it's, yeah. And is there any restrictions as to where you can work with the pesky pathway? Because I yeah. haven't heard much about that, actually. <laughs> so pesky pathway restrictions are mm. pretty much same as the comparability assessment pathway. So MM2, yep. MM7 uh, regions. But okay. then with the new DPA rules, lots of practices, as Sanjay okay. said, they have got a pesky doctor there mm. in their practice right now in Wollongong. So there might be restrictions, okay. but those restrictions might be sometimes very pleasant. Uh, so do your research. There okay. might be many practices in the regional centers. Yeah. Okay. And so partially comparable will also have restrictions in terms of where you can work. Yep. So as per college yep. website, the partially comparable yep. and fully comparable are restricted to MM2 to mm. MM7. MM2. But the okay. way the deficiency of the doctor are lots of major yeah. city practices and regional practices have classified yeah. themselves as a DPA, which is MM1 and MM2. Yeah. So I think most yeah. of the GPs who are coming to Australia will just completely get sucked up into those regional and to major city practices. DPAs. Yeah. And then there'll be okay, more placements further down the line, further out in the rural. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the talk. That's okay. Um, any other questions? So just unmute hello, or... Um, hello, Dr. Rajan. Yep, please. Go ahead. Uh, doctor, can you hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly, yes. Uh, so, doctor, I have a uh, few questions regarding the GP job with level on supervision. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm a fresh graduate and I have only two years of hospital experience in Bangladesh. And if I can manage a GP job offer with level on supervision, is it possible to get the registration? And what is the requirements for that? All right. So I think what you're referring to that you have done AMC part one then, obviously. Yes. But yes. you haven't got a GP yes. experience. No, it's, it's two years hospital experience. So I don't think that you then qualify for any pathway in my understanding, because for PESCI, uh, you need to have a three-year experience. And for a PEP pathway, you must have MRCGP or any other, other postgraduate qualifications. Uh, plus, so is it, it's not possible to get the GP job, right? Not to my understanding, no. You need to work in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So I should have at least three years GP job experience. That's right. For a pesky pathway. And in mm -hmm. fact, they are so strict mm -hmm. about that. They want you to double mm -hmm. check with the medical board of Australia and AMC first to clarify your experience. And once you've got that experience accredited, yep. then you apply for a pesky pathway. Mm 
I was reading the pesky handbook cool. yesterday. Okay. Yeah, so they're very strict into what okay. they choose as a pesky pathway. Yeah, In okay. Fact, it's only fair because you're kind of do you're actually coming to a prescribed cl GP clinic. So because of that, they want to have that comprehensive experience because it's where the uh, GP pathway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your clarification, doctor. Not a problem. Dr. Anania, you have got a question? Dr. An Anania has got a question? Yeah. Uh, hi. I want to ask something, if you can hear me. Yep. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, actually, I want to know that I have work experience in UAE and Pakistan. Right now, currently, I'm in Karachi and working as an emergency uh, GP and uh, practicing like a family medicine specialist as well. I've done my MRC GP uh, international. Uh, but I don't have CPD hours. So do I need to get the CPD hours first before uh, initiating my application? Um, I think it says on the college website that you should have 50 hours of CPD in the 12 months preceding the application. So it's and, uh, not difficult to get. It's actually, I mean, I think you can stack up the CPD hours uh, within a matter of few months. So I don't think it's a huge um, issue. Um, and there's so many websites which can offer you for a small fee or um, or even for free. So maybe if you're interested in the pathway, just orient yourself with the CPD requirements, start taking them off, even though you may decide at the end that you don't want to do and go ahead with the process. No, I want to. That's why before initiating, initiating the application, I need to get the CPD hours first. So I need to look around for the CPD uh, opportunities first to yeah, collect so, my hours. And I yeah. get my application. That's right. Yeah, so by the time but, your application is okay. lodged, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Riz, to just add on to that. There are some courses that we're actually getting uh, where you can actually get the CPD hours, but obviously in order to accumulate that, you also need to be an RACGP member as well. So it kind of goes hand in hand with that, but definitely a lot of websites providing that. That shouldn't really be stopping. I would say start the prep work for your application. In the meantime, obviously you can get that CPD accumulated, yeah. I apply, uh, how can I initiate my application before having the CPD hours? Oh, what I meant is like prep work for the application. Uh, not initiate. Okay. Yeah, my correction. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. I got it. I got it. Okay, fine. Thank right. you. No problem. Okay. Um, any other questions, guys? Or uh hello. Hello, hello. all. Yes, yeah. Just I want to ask about yeah. Uh, just I want to ask about the job offer. It could be after the uh, RCTP application approval or we can get the job offer before. You can get a job. And what's offer the procedure before. to get a job? So I think you're talking about which pathway though. That's the important thing. The PEP, uh, PEP specialist for MRCGP. Okay. So I think I've recently helped with two or three applications in pipeline. I would encourage all of those doctors to start making inquiries early on. So by the time your PEP assessment results come through, you've already interviewed with some of the practices and it's a free process. Like you don't have to pay anything. Um, you can get in touch with Rashmi. There are some other places that you can start interviewing and suss out the situation. So if you've got a job offer, at least you know that where you stand. Uh, and then that job offer would obviously be subject to your PEP outcome. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, Dr. Iswan kindly put the email links for Rakshmi and all. Yeah, we'll so do. We'll do that. And if you go to our website, it's already everything on there. Do you know where our website, uh, Dr. Emergency Focus? Dot net. Okay, thank you so much. Not a problem. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, and, uh, and hi. Uh, I, I just have a quick question, doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so me and my family had Australian PR, but that uh, PR got expired. We didn't pursue with the uh, pursue the immigration process. So that got expired, I think, like around three, four years back. So in case if I get accepted um, for the PEP specialist pathway, do you think expired PR will be hindering my further process of getting a job opportunity in Australia? Or how does that work if you could sh uh, shine some light on that? I don't think so. 
uh, but I'm not a migrant agent. Like mm-hmm. uh, I don't think because your PR was not lapsed mm-hmm. because of any criminal or any legal issue. It was uh, no, 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 no. It's pursue. just that we didn't want to. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it should be an I issue. Can... Yeah. Okay. I can pop in mm-hmm. there. I think what we can do, Doctor Binesh, is that um, I can send an inquiry to my migration agent, and we can get back to you on mm-hmm. that. But I don't think that should be an hindrance. Yeah. But it's a good question. Okay. You know, I've got a question before, to be honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right thank you so okay so i'm definitely going to get in touch with you guys it's a wonderful session thank, thank, you. thank you thanks okay. thanks anybody else has got a question please yeah. unmute and yes, ask hello question. hello i have a question yeah please go ahead can you hear me uh, i can hear okay i can oh, not hear you uh, very clearly but uh, yes please go Okay. I can't. I can't hear you very. Can you hear me now? I don't know. Maybe. No, I can't hear you very clearly. Sorry. Uh, All right. How about I get Dr. Chima to ask question? Dr. Chima Nawogo. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes. Yes, it's Dr. Chima. I'm so sorry. I uh, I joined late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, yeah. So what's your question, Doc? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, what's your question, Dr. Chima? Hello? I think he's uh, is frozen. Can you ask the question directly? Let's say, hello, Dr. Iswan. Yes, Dr. Fahad. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have a very quick question. Uh, as I am working in UAE, my mm-hmm. question is regarding the this uh, comparability uh, ten clinical cases that you have mm-hmm. just mentioned. Yeah. That uh, it is very difficult to get experience in uh, ops and gynae uh, along with the psychiatry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how uh, this thing will impact in getting the compar- uh, compar- uh, comparability? things like uh, oh okay in, all right so presenting look, the 10 yeah. clinical cases so those 10 uh, clinical cases are not related to obs and gynae uh, and uh, psychiatry it's just an example that you may have seen a case related to obs and gynae related to mental health related to ischemic heart disease any 10 gp cases are fine as long as they show some diversity pediatrics adult health mental health any diversity in practice. It does not have to be hospital experience. It can be any experience in the general practice, which is reflective of the diversity of your practice. Okay. And it won't, won't make any difference if the 10 clinical cases does not include any OBS and gynae or I don't think cases. so. No, I, mean, I don't think so. That, I mean, oh. yeah. So the college does say that it show a diversity in clinical practice. So it should encompass mm-hmm. uh, some pediatrics experience, I think, as as far as I understand, mm-hmm. it should include a key adult geriatrics. It should include some sort of chronic health, diabetes, or hypertension or hypoglycemia. Mm. Um, but yeah, 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 okay, it doesn't. I got it. I got it. Thank you yeah. so much. You. That's okay. All right. And uh, anybody else? Or are we done? Um, can I have a question, please? Yes, prosperity. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, I have few experience in few years of experience in GV, mm-hmm. and I now move and work have been working as the ENT doctor for like eight years. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in the FSP program, mm-hmm. so uh, how can I know that if if I'm eligible for the program? So you and have to I have passed in- AMC one exam for FSP, at least. Um, and you have to have uh, at least uh, the initial fee, which would be eight to ten thousand dollars for the first term. So if you've passed the yeah, MC one, then and you've got yeah, an experience as a GP. The, yeah. Yep. I Sorry, look at on. the website, the FSP, and mm-hmm. it's mentioned about the job offering. Mm-hmm. So it seems like it's required job offering before I can join the FSP program. Yeah. So FF is, FSP is a very selective and very exclusive program. You, uh, you need to apply it only when it opens. So it only opens a certain time of the year. It's not something like a PEP, which is all year, all year around. 
their dates mentioned on the website. It opens in and you need to apply in a window. Um, and uh, you have to, you know, have a GP practice which accepts you. And once they accept you, then you can obviously get registered with that program. Audio error can all. Okay. And Dr. Samson, have you got a question? Yes. Uh, hello, Rizwan. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I am from uh, Bangladesh. Actually, I am on behalf of my wife. Uh, mm -hmm. She is she is a doctor. She is a fresh graduate, mm -hmm. and recently she has about uh, six month of any uh, six month of experience of anesthesia. She is working as a medical officer. So my question is, uh, we are uh, moving to Canada recently. Uh, actually, for my uh, I am doing I am going to doing my masters in computer science, and she will move she will be moving to with me. Uh, in the long run, she has a plan to go Australia and uh, start her career as a anesthesia as a medical officer or uh, in a anesthesia department. So. Uh, what is the best pathway for her to start her career in Australia? Can I be honest with you? Hey, yes, sure. Okay. Go to Canada first and come contact me when you're okay. done. Because I think uh, very few people, once they've migrated to one country, would think of that long-term solution. And anesthesia is very competitive. It's a whole different pitch and approach. Just based on six months right. experience uh, back in your own country, it would not cut it for her to get into into, uh, into the anesthetic uh, training pathway. So if, she, if you were to come to Australia right now, she would need to pass AMC1, AMC2, uh, work in a hospital for at least 24 months in critical okay. care specialty, like ICU, anesthesia, emergency department, pediatrics, and then really have good, strong CV credentials to qualify for interview. And then okay. interview is a very rigorous process for anesthesia. Like Australian graduates spend about one to two years to get into an aesthetic training. So for someone okay. who's coming as a foreigner, they would be really up against a lot of, uh, you know, preparation. Doesn't mean that they, she won't get it. I've had a one doctor from Pakistan who's now working as an aesthetic consultant who's purely trained and worked here. And so it all depends on your zeal. But I think this question is okay. uh, a, a little bit, I think, uh, difficult to answer in those circumstances as yours. <laughs> Yes, yes, I got it. Actually, I I, I am joined here because uh, in Canada uh, the process is so tough. I heard uh, from someone uh, that's why. Yeah, in the long that's run, like a professional professional to... death for a doctor there. So if you want to commit professional death for a doctor, you go to Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so except uh, except anesthesiologist, uh, uh, there is any way that uh, she can uh, continue her job. Uh, in G even GP Patrick's in GP practice, where? Uh, in in Australia, in Australia, or if you have any information about Canada, I don't have any Canadian information. I just know that Canada is not okay. good for doctors, migrant doctors. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is the problem. Okay, so for uh, Australia, uh, for GP, uh, what are what are the best pathway for her? Oh, just look at this video again. We've just covered this for the good part of two hours. I, I cannot go through over again. Okay. So uh, please uh, have a look okay. at my YouTube channel. You'll find plenty of videos on there or I'll upload this video on Facebook channel. I think it's live streaming there. So you can go through this uh, again. Uh, I just want to answer okay, some specific questions related to the program. Best of luck, my friend. Thank you, Rijan. Okay. Any uh, other questions? Uh, hello, doctor. Yes. Uh, actually, I have three years GP experience and I did master of surgery three years in back in my country. Mm -hmm. Then I got this GP job interview. And in case if I get a GP job offer, uh, do AFRA or MBA still check my GP balance of three years or is it fine? Sorry, I don't understand the question. Uh, Rashmi, were you able to get that question? Uh, so are you talking about PEP pathway? Are you talking about PESKI? Are you talking about- Sorry, I am pathway? talking about that PESKI pathway. PESKI pathway. PESKI pathway. So you've got three year GP experience. You just have to do AMC1 then. I have done uh, AMC1 and uh, English test as well. All right. Okay. So that's fine then. Uh, yeah. You can apply for PESKI pathway straight away. So do they do they check my GP experience uh, equivalent? Or... Yes, yes, yes. So they will they will they will ask for your GP experience. Yes. 
Okay, yeah. that, that was my question. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hey, Rizwan, I think this is he's probably the best candidate for uh, Rashmi to hire straight away. Okay. Yep, yep. All right, Rashmi, you just gone mute. Hang on, I'll just un unmute yourself, please. Yep, close. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes, if you get in touch with me, I'm just going to send you a uh, message with my email address and we can be in touch. Mm. So I guess I think that's about okay, it, thank guys. Thank you so much. It's getting late now. And uh, um, hello. Yes. Hello. Hi. Yes, Dr. Hina. Hi. Uh, yes, uh, Rizwan, uh, it was a wonderful session. I just have one question uh, that uh, I'm still confused to which uh, pathway should I follow because I did my MRCGP internationals in 2019. That, that time I was practicing in Dubai, in UAE as a GP. I, I, was, uh, I worked there in a clinic in Jumeirah like for uh, 13 months. And then later on, I shifted to Sharjah in a hospital in emergency. I was working there as a GP. Mm -hmm. uh, now I am in Pakistan in my home country and uh, there I just I worked for like uh, eight months in uh, I in cardiology OPD the problem mm -hmm. is I I'm also doing MRCP uh, part one and part two and I'm you know trying to get dates for paces but since there is a too much backlog so they are not uh, giving you know it's not easy to get uh, you know a secure a seat for paces nowadays mm -hmm. so uh, since it's been for me it's been three years already I have completed uh, my MRCGP. So to which pathway if I want to apply or if I want to, uh, you know, come here as a GP in Australia. So I'm eligible for this pesky pathway or PP pathway. I think for the PEP pathway, even though you've got the credentials for it, you will have a, a huge gap. So either you justify that gap and then you join a GP practice because you still need to have uh, a four week of GP experience in the last 12 months. And there is another requirement like 12 months of GP experience in the last four years. So either you do a GP experience, which is current to fulfill the RECI requirement to enter into the PEP pathway. So okay. essentially what I'm trying to say, just get okay. a six months job in a GP as a full time. So you might be able to qualify for PEP pathway. That's simple as that. Okay. But if you want so, to come- uh, to Can you give pathway, me an email? Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry, go yes. on. Yes. Yes. You are telling me that for now I have to be working uh, uh, as a six months at least an experience before I apply for uh, PEP, PEP pathway. pathway, right? Yep. 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 And then it, you can work okay. on justifying your clinical gap uh, of three years as to what were you doing in that time because that will look odd on the CV. Um, if you want to come through the pesky pathway, you have to do AMC1 for that. And you, you, I think uh -huh. you qualify for that. Uh, okay. For pesky pathway. Yep. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And email is info at emergencyfocus.net. But if you just remember our website in emergencyfocus.net, you can, you know, send a message. Um, um, yeah. So lots of people send a message and inquiries through our website. Emergency. Oh, the problem is only an ex a gap in my experience. You know, there is only uh, one problem. Otherwise, I have my internship done in uh, gynae ops uh, and in medicine from, you know, very reputed hospitals in my home country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was working in uh, Dubai as well as a GP, but there is a, still a gap for me as a GP practice. So that's why I was still confused. So I think uh, I should go for AMC1 for pesky and PP. I need to do work as a GP, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. And I want your email. So if there is any query later on, uh, can I be get in touch with you? Because I need you. I found you people very, very helpful. Absolutely. You will be more than, I will be more than happy to provide you career counseling session. You just have to make an appointment and we can certainly do that. Not a problem. And I'll put in my Thank email so address now. In fact, Dr. Saira, can you put in the email address in the chat box, uh, please? All right. Okay. Any other questions? Last two, I think. Thank you. Hi. Can I ask a question? Yes, Dr. Irfan, please go ahead. Yeah. Actually, I missed your session initially. So I joined in the last part. So maybe you cleared this one in the beginning. I don't know. I just want to ask you that uh, regarding the cases which we have to, I mean, upload like 10 cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's as you mentioned that they are the uh, cases which we saw daily in our general practice. 
but i mean if uh, there is anything particular about them i mean which which can uh, uh, cause any problem in processing or they will uh, make an objection on the that the cases are not properly prepared or they are not satisfied with uh, whatever we uh, documentation provided so i mean is it a very uh, crucial step in this one or it's just uh, that we have to present or the upload uh, the way we uh, deal daily in our uh, practice or in our day-to-day uh, -day basis practice so that's a good question and it is very crucial every component of application process is crucial um, I have seen some application forms with an excellent detail to the cases. So one of the prerequisites for the cases is that they need to be detailed, meaning they need to reflect your history taking, your assessment, your patient-centered care, your management. So all the components of the complete patient journey as a GP. Uh, your wordings need to be right, your grammar needs to be right. And that's where I was saying initially in the first part of my talk that you need to get very good in your written and verbal communication skills. Now, these are not everybody's forte and that's where our help can in because we can collaborate on your application. RSCGP allows it. So if you choose me as a collaborator on your application, once you put your case in, in a basic sense of the words, I can actually start modifying the wordings and we can have a chat, we can have an interview and keep on modifying those cases. So uh, take this, if you're interested in PEP pathway, uh, please take every component of PEP pathway very seriously. Uh, you're entering into the Australian general practice training program, and uh, that requires a substantial amount of input of time and effort and credibility. So yeah, I'm more than happy to help you. The college allows collaborative approach in terms of cases, uh, but uh, don't think it's just one of the things or tick box that you have to do like a date of birth. It is quite mm -hmm. deep yeah. in depth. Okay, that's uh, that's what I want to clear. You very nicely explained. So I mean, uh, what I uh, saw on your website and what you sent me in a mail also. Okay. That once we, I mean, collaborate with you, or you will, uh, we will take the one what what the package you offered. So it will cover all these uh, aspects. I mean, the process, right. all the, the application, the, yeah, uh, and everything, 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 everything. everything. And then I'll get so, you in touch with Dr. Uh, Rashmi. We will Rashmi. go step by step. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. once you're accepted, then uh, you talk to Rashmi as well. So she can address the okay. uh, job aspects and visa side of things, because my expertise are with my team and Rashmi is a part of my team. Mm -hmm. So we try to provide right. the whole door to door service. So my yeah. my main efforts okay. are to get your application through and approved uh, through RSCGP, mm -hmm. making sure that all what okay. you stand for is legitimately covered in the application. Okay, and then Rashmi's job is to find your best contract with the GP. Okay, okay, right. thank you. Not a problem. Okay, I think we're nearly done. And uh, it was great, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, Hello, uh, look, okay, all right, Dr. GK, please. Hello. Yes, yeah, jump in. Yeah. Ask your question. Uh, thank you for the wonderful session. Uh, actually, I just give a small background about me. I am a medical officer with uh, extensive, uh, more than eight years experience mm -hmm. in emergency medicine. I'm practicing as a part-time GP for last eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have done my MRC GP and I also hold a full GM's registration with license to practice, but currently not practicing in UK. Mm -hmm. uh, no UK experience, actually. I just completed my pathway. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so regarding the PEP specialist pathway, so uh, with my experience, I guess I've been having nearly eight years part-time experience. Uh, is there any, can I apply for the comparative assessment? I don't see any reason why not. Um, just have a look at the college website. I think eight year part-time would it, it still equate to about four years. So it should be right. Uh, I think it's worth an application um, and it's, it's, it's not a very expensive initial application. I know the price could be dear, but if you've got credentials right, if you've got a GP experience there, it's certainly worth applying that after you've oriented yourself to, that, uh, um, to those guidelines on the website, RSCGP website. Rashmi, have you got to add something no. on it? No, I think uh, I agree. That would be the best way to do it, yeah. All right, okay, excellent. Okay, guys, I think we should stop here. Uh, okay. It's been Thank you so much. Yeah. It's, and it's been a pleasure. Can I have the last question, question please? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have yes. been, yeah. Waiting for a long time. Yeah. Um, thank you for the great talk. Yeah, I have learned a lot. 
So I, I am, a, you know, um, a doctor who is living in Vietnam and my specialist is in dermatology. And actually I'm curious, yeah, I want to be a GP in Australia and I'm planning to learn to learn to pass the AMC one. Yep. And so after I pass the AMC one, so, so what is the, you know, kind of, um, you know, necessary step that I, I need to do? Do I need yep. to apply for the hospital to get the experience to be a, yeah. to be a GP or yeah, what kind of yeah step that I, I, I will do? Thank you very so, much. Yeah, so all of the fresh doctors who are uh, not aligned to any particular pathway that we've discussed, um, you need to pass AMC1 as a first step. And after AMC1, I would say ideally you need to pass AMC2 as well. Uh, but you can apply for jobs in hospital in Australia after AMC1. Once you pass the AMC1 and you get a job offer to work in Australia, you work here for uh, like one or two years. And in that time, try to pass AMC2 or complete a work-based assessment. And once you get a full registration, then the next best part would be to apply for permanent residency and then you get onto the GP training program. That uh, would be um, something actually, which... I, I, uh, I already got a PR here. All right, okay. So then you don't have to get a permanent residency, but you just have to pass AMC1 get a job here mm -hmm. and then pass AMC2 or complete a WBA program. And once you've done the full registration, then you can buy it, join the AGPT pathway, which is an okay. Australian general practice pathway. Yep. Yep. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Okay, guys, I think that's it. If you've got any more questions, please book an appointment and we'll be more than happy to answer. Send rush me an email, send me an email. We can prioritize an appointment. Thank you very much, Dr. Saira. Dr. Rashmi, Rashmi, I said Dr. Rashmi, but Rashmi. And it was no, pleasure. I'm just Rashmi. <laughs> and uh, yes, and it was a pleasure to have you all on board. I think we were initially planning to do an hour and we went way beyond an hour. And I'm sorry. Oh, we uh, did. I, yeah. I, uh, our Zoom had uh, the maximum limit of 100 participants. There were 400 registered. And uh, that's why I decided to go live on Facebook. So I hope that you can catch up all on Facebook as well. So not major issue. And I, I hope we are able to cover the gist of the majority of questions. Um, okay. Thank you very much and all the best and happy to look into your specific queries. If you send me an email or book an appointment. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, great talking. Great Q&A. Good night. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everyone.